Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. How are we all doing? How's things been? Ah, oh, wow. Okay, let's just get set up here. So today's an interesting day. I'm gonna make a start on actually Where are we back? There we go. This one isn't back. Do a thing. There we go. So, um, hey there, Max, Max Kru, oh, Max Kura, hey then, and Glorious Sir, welcome, welcome. How you both been? So, uh, it's, you know, just started a couple hours later than normal usually, but um yeah today's gonna be an interesting day we're gonna be so we we did some research last stream wasn't it to see how we get this multiple keyboard thing can we get it working right and the answer is yes um so now we have a way of getting the the device node as it's called where the event the event file is that you that the keyboard key stuff is coming back from. So we're able to map that back to UDEV now. And UDEV is the thing that tells us all about our devices that are connected. So we're able to distinguish the different uh, events from different keyboards and mice. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting our abstraction for different devices connected. So we did have a test had a test on it, a little test file. And this guy is, uh, so I just got to enable this one. And we just stole this from the internet because, you know, that's how you do it with most things, right? When you're just trying to learn it. But this is something that allows us to enumerate over all of the UDEV devices. So this would give us all the USB stuff connected, stuff like that. Hi there, Ty Beaver. How you doing? So I think we're gonna, we're gonna end up using this API, but I just wanna double check exactly. Like, I wanna have a, bit, have a bit of a play and see. Oh, so I need to plug in my PlayStation controller. Cause this has like five USB, like USB things to it. Uh, you know, it's got the gamepad itself. It's got the touchpad. It's got the acceler the motion sensor or accelerometer, whatever you wanna call that. It's got the, uh, the vibrate, the, you can send it sound and you can receive sound from it, right? So there's all these, there's like five different USB things on it. So we want to like plug this in and see how UDEV is like, refers to it. And if there's a way to refer to it as a single unit, but also separate things. So that'd be interesting. Let me just find my USB cable. The hump begins. Oh, there it is. How's it going, Tide Beaver? We've been up to. When are you going to be an awake beaver? Ah, uh, USB Type A. Always get it the wrong way around. There we go. We're in. So if I plug this guy in. It might take over the whole stream. No? Okay, that's good. This microphone is still the stream microphone. Trying to learn OpenGL. Hmm, interesting. Very cool. Are you using LearnOpenGL.com? And are you doing it in Rust? Hey there, M. Fetter. Welcome back. It's been a while. How you been? Oh. I got a Pepsi. No, no. Good job. Wait a minute. What language are you doing in, Type Beaver? <laughs> uh, oh, good. C++. Oh. Yeah. 
when you see your seat type <laughs> a children's that that's cool that's good um Oh, good. Thank you. You've been catching up on your devlogs on YouTube. Nice so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was actually planning on doing one today, but I got tired. Well, this morning. I just wasn't in the mood for it, but I have a um, one about the memory, memory allocation, which I'm going to go over. I'm just trying to sort of get this one together. So, but yeah. Talk about, about things that we've done with custom memory and stuff but yeah that's good so hopefully i'll get around to doing that one soon it might be next weekend now but yeah it's cool though but yeah it's hard it's hard to do dev vlogs because one they take time and two you gotta like try and be interesting enough and then like condense it to a small amount of time uh hard i much prefer streaming but yeah right so we print out all these udev devices we're not getting anything and <laughs> this one this one just called mice right so we can uh, edit there might be some uh Ways we can print out like a, a good name for it. Oh, this is a good name. Hmm. I've just made a thin abstraction layer on top of Vulcan on my engine now. Next step is go high level abstraction for shaders. Nice. Descriptor sets and stuff. Looking to integrate in your compiler to workflow. Awesome. Awesome. By the way, if you're going to be doing that, uh, make sure you grab the latest Git. Because um, that's the one that I use. I haven't done another latest release and I, I keep meaning to do it. But again, just takes... Well, we might do it... When we get back into doing some form of graphics, I'll probably do the release then. But yeah, so just get latest Git uh, on that one. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the Discord or anything. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link for that in the chat. But yeah, sounds really great, man. Um, how are you finding all so far, like, like uh, the, the new graphics APIs in that Vulcan? Um, right. Do I plan on adding pipeline descriptions in it? Depth testing, etc. That's interesting. Um, I have thought about it, um, you know, including some pipeline definition, but then again, it's like, it doesn't make much sense because if you're defining it, so depth testing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the problem is like with it, so if I just go over to my, um, game of engine graphics or source graphics graphic shaders yeah so the the problem is right is like this is basically c code right it obviously has got a few little extra type system e bits to sort of get around it and um and that but for the most part it's just c code so if we find a way to sort of declare pipeline state objects right or, or pipeline graphics pipelines in here in some C way, you're basically declaring like a global variable, right? So then it, it basically just becomes like incredibly pointless, right? Because you might as well, like me, tell, me telling you how your graphics pipeline needs to be in your application just seems, um, it doesn't seem very helpful. Um, so, you know, because you might want a, a, a more slim version unless, you know, you might want to take out stencils or something, right? Or or vertex, or, or, or the vertex buffers, for instance. Um, so, yeah, it's just defining that stuff just seems, yeah, I don't know. And pipeline state objects could be going away in the future as well. So, it's, yeah, it's just not, it just doesn't seem like it, gives much by uh, having a way 
to declare them because it's just like declaring in C code. So yeah, it doesn't feel beneficial in any way. Uh, someday you will... I'll switch to modern API, but I'm concentrating on fleshing out the game mostly. Yes, decent idea. Um, you could, yeah, you, yeah, have something to work towards. GL, draw some objects, then I can build. Yep. Hey, there, Ross, good to see you. How's things been? Um, but yeah, yeah, just that's 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 a good way of doing it. Just and then write, yeah, yeah, learn, learn the new APIs that way because they're very. You know, they're a GPU API, they're not a graphics API. So you just uh, get lost in trying to figure out stuff. Like, what is the right abstraction on top of this? Yes, it's up to the user to define it. When the user writes the shader, you generate the reflection for it. Yeah, so I've been playing around the, with the reflection stuff. We do use it in in this project hence why I'm playing around with it uh, because so if I go into my build directory I output the shader metadata that H which comes from HCC and it gives you a list of all the shaders and it gives you a list of all the uh, the constants the push constants that get given to the shader and we give you reflection information on top of that so you can do sync code with that um, which I th we haven't done that in our in this project but I might do it soon, uh, but it gives you all the metadata about the shaders, like their compute dispatch sizes and stuff. Uh, you know, their compute or pixel or vertex gives you their names, gives you the offsets of what resources are there. And if they're write only, read only, that sort of stuff, right? Um, so here's this lo logo push constants, right? Or bundle constants as we call it. But output texture and a logo texture, write only texture 2D and read only texture 2D for the logo. So if I hop back to that, the shaders here. Um, it's this one here, right? So I've got reflection information. Uh, I passed that out. And I don't, so I do it in C form so you can compile it into your program. But I don't do, I don't do it I need to do a JSON version or like a, a text version that you can parse because I want to do like hot code reloading. And if the sync code is dependent on this file, it needs to obviously be reloaded. Um, but yeah, just uh, so I want to explore like what what is some in good reflection information that's that that could be beneficial for people. But yeah, if you have any ideas, uh, give me a shout. Um, I'm missing compute shaders unless I ditch web. Oh, am I missing compute shaders? Unless I ditch. So, I don't know. Compute shaders are like, if you're like a, a PC or, or, a, a, or work on consoles, basically. Compute shaders are like really ideal. They, they don't require like using the rasterizer to like, you know, if you do like a full screen thing or you can just arbitrary work, arbitrarily work on like just data on the GPU. Um, and you can also just write to textures as well in a very easy way. If you, um, if you refer to them in pixel coordinates, for instance. Um, but uh, yeah, like, but then if you target mobile, you basically can't use compute shaders. Uh, well, you can, but it's just not optimal because they require reading and writing from main memory, which is very power inefficient on mobile, you know? But I think if you use the Metal API, the Apple devices are kind of okay about it. But yeah. Uh... Right, they're not available on iOS using GL, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hey, Ben Montana. Not doing bad, not doing bad. Um, yeah, do, doing all right. Just, uh, oh, last stream was um, was quite a lot. Because um, I was trying to figure out, like, how to use X input 
the XLibX input, but we figured it out now. So pretty happy. So now we can detect different keyboards being, or events from different keyboards. So we're just using UDEV right now to uh, try and detect all the devices. And then we're gonna be like, writing a device, like an OS device sort of abstraction in a way. So we can, uh, yeah. But yeah, how's things been going with you? How's, how's work and everything? How's life? Nope, we got seg fault. How do we get seg fault? Oh, path is null. I keep pressing F5 I'm in a different project so it won't work. There we go. Right, so this is the name. Where does it tell us like the... Like the name of it like... You know, because there's that file so you can like cap rock devices. Uh, but I want like this name. Because as you can see we've got like... You know, so I've connected my PS5 controller, right? We've got dual sense touchpad, motion sensors, and I want to sort of see all of, I want to see if I can get like a name like that for it. So there is a parent device, that's interesting. Oh, 3.2. Mm, let's see. Um, work is pretty low pace at the moment. We've got some spare time. To tinker. Noise. Dominic experimenting with uh, in C11 with D3D11. Did you manage to render getting up compute in the meantime? Yeah. So we've we've only got the ba we've got the GPU API in, but we've not done any graphics on top of that yet. We've only just been doing test code. So we basically have like uh, GPU, GPU. So we just have like an, a nice GPU API where we can sort of make textures and buffers. Um, we can copy from the CPU to the GPU and GPU to CPU with upload and read back. We've got read back, we have to read it back at a specific time like while you're recording the next frame because uh, things have to be double buffered but we also have a read back which allows it to like automatically do the copy for you to a more fixed pointer location because you know you're reading directly from the read back buffer um and then also have like read back command buffers which is a bit of an interesting thing um so you, so the gpu can produce commands for the cpu to do so it's it's, it's i'm sort of put it in because it's like what happens if some of the logic could be on the GPU and how would that, you know, I'm leaving the door open for some of that. Um, and then I've got like, you know, just a way to dispatch and then synchronize on resources. Um, you yeah, dispatch compute. And that's about it. So, but yeah, we're able to farm fire multiple compute shaders and the synchronization code works. Um, so it's already there for the R&D whenever we get there. We're going to be doing some uh, 2D stuff first, for, do some quick UI, but yeah. Are those uploads synced or do you have to queue them on a worker thread? Give them back a sync point. Uh, yes, the uploads are, they're staged. Yeah, they're staged. So you write it into a staging buffer and then at the start of the at the start of the frame, the start of the next frame on the GPU, it will copy it to the more long term place. Hmm. My Wi Fi has just gone on my phone. I'm still good here, right? That's good. Two seconds. I can't see chat right now. <laughs> 
There we go, it's back. Right. Okay, I can see you here now. Let me just redo my phone. Excellent, you come back. Sweet, I can see you now. So how do you handle the sink? How do you flush? Oh, sorry, do you, do you flush? Yeah. So what we do, I've got an example. GFX, GFX, C. So that's cool, no worries, no worries. Do I have an example in here? Right, so we haven't really, so, okay, so the upload can be done. Ooh, ooh. Yes, uploads must, they have to be done outside of the command buffer recording. So I haven't got a work graph in here. So this is very, uh, you know, it's very manually optimized basically. Um, but again, it's just for prototyping. So it's completely, completely fine. So we've got this GPU frame start. All right, this, what this does internally is it goes right, we're going to now open up a command buffer to record. Um, and then anything in here, any dispatches that go in here, GPU command, read back, or, or a dispatch, it would just record it literally directly into the command buffer. Um, and then obviously you do the submit, and it will submit it to the GPU. Now, so we've got these upload textures and stuff like this, right? These have to happen outside of the command buffer recording, right? And then... From what I recall, let's have a bit of a gander. Uh, from what I recall, let's have a think. We uh, go over all of the uploads, at, I think at the start of the frame. So this just pre prepares the read back, um, but let's go into the actual back end. Get in there. Uh, this one. Yep. So let's have a, have a think. So we acquire the next image, right? We get set everything up. Uh, da, 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 da. yeah. Then we do the, we flush the caches somewhere. Yeah, we, we flush the upload buffer. Wait a minute. Should we do that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we flush the upload buffer that you've... So you've done all your uploads outside of the frame start. So we flush that so the GPU's caches are basically validated and it can load it from the buffer again. And then here, we just go over and record it in... So we start a command buffer by now. Uh, it's somewhere up here. Yeah, right here. We start the command buffer. And then we essentially just go over all of the uploads that you've said you've done before the frame, uh, before the frame start. And we just like copy it into the correct, like uh, the correct place. So if it's a buffer, obviously we do the buffer to buffer copy. Oh, wait, wait, this is the sync code. Yes, yeah, so this is the sync code. So does the pipeline barrier. So yeah, we do the pipeline barrier where we transition it from what state it was in into copy destination. And then after we've done the, this pipeline barrier, we then go over all of the entries and then do the copy buffer to buffer and then copy buffer to image. So it copies it from the upload buffer into the destination buffer or upload buffer into the destination image, right? That's, that's what we do, if that makes any sense. Did I, oh my days. My phone has lost connection again. Did that make sense? Damn my phone. Anyway, let's get the connection back. Come on. But yeah, let me know if you need, if that, if that doesn't make any sense. So we're trying to get the name. We're trying to find the name. Is there like a name? You'd have device name. Can 
Come on, is it should be reconnected by now? Oh, I can have first for myself. Excellent. So it is immediate, not delayed. It is it's 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 delayed in a sense, right? We so let me draw it. Right. Come on. Go get the dot net. Gotta get the viruses. Uh oh, so you're talking about my frames. Oh yeah, yeah. So how my frames work is like this. So we have a command buffer, right? So we only have one command buffer right now, but we'll probably do multiple. But imagine this is like all the command buffers that happen in this frame, and this is the next frame's command buffers. We we actually use the timeline semaphores now. So basically, the way the timeline semaphores work is this one here, like this come up over here is waiting will only go so this is on uh, frame zero this will have zero when it finishes it sets the timeline semaphore to one right so that means this 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 one only starts when the timeline semaphore gets set to one and then it will uh this one will go so this is the way we do the syncing right uh, but we do wait for fences somewhere as well. I forgot we wait for fences. Right after the submit. I don't think we're, we're waiting for it before we start the next frame. Not before the submit, before we... Uh, let's have a bit of a look. I think it's... Uh... So when we do a frame start, so there's not a frame end where we wait because there's... You might want to do stuff before the next. So we do a wait for semaphore. Yeah, wait for two frames ago to be finished. Wait, is there an issue here with the uploads? I don't think so. Hmm. Because you're... Yeah, there might be a sync problem here then with the upload buffer actually, maybe. Because it's done before the frame start, potentially. Because that's where the readback works, isn't it? Hmm. Because if you have a... Hmm, getting a bit warm in here, let's take these off. So, if you have one frame, so one frame, let's, let's draw it out, rather than me just trying to picture in my head. So you've got like one frame on the GPU, one frame on the CPU, right? And what am I doing? That, there you go. So one frame on the CPU, one frame on the GPU or whatever. So this one is being read from while this one's being written to. So, so the problem is, is like, um, so, dun, 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 dun. so you've, so you've said, so imagine you've written this one out and then you've said, submit right and now you're imagining that this one is maybe still running and this one is now waiting so if this one is still running right and yeah and you did the uploads before frames start and but so the thing is is like the uploads happen right at the start of the frame so it's very unlikely to happen but it does it's possible yeah, so I think there's a bit of a sync issue here, actually. So maybe the uploads have to happen. Um, or we triple buffer the upload buffer, and that, that'll fix it. Yeah, so I might triple buffer the upload buffer, and that'll fix that problem. If that makes any sense. 
So the problem is, is this, the GPU could be executing this buffer, like executing it, while this one is being queued up on the GPU as well. And you've gone around, like you've just finished like writing to it from the CPU and queued it up. And then you, you're, you've gone around, and then before frame start, so before you called frame start, which does the wait for semaphore, and you've decided, hey, I'm going to write to the next upload buffer, which has actually been executed on the GPU. So yeah, there's a bit of a sync issue there. Yeah, I could, I could use a semaphore, right? I could just have a semaphore because semaphores are used for CPU and GPU com communication now. So I could wait, I could use a timeline semaphore and just wait for it. And that's a way around it. Yeah, maybe that's the way of doing it. But yeah, it's a good point. I think that's, yeah. I think that's got a bit of an issue actually. But yeah, it's not shown any problems yet. Because <laughs> it's not too bunged up with uh, stuff to do, you see. So it's not so bad. Uh, hey there, Russell. How you doing? How you doing? So we're trying to get the device name. See, um, list udev devices in C. Oh yeah. So subsystem USB, because we just subsystem input, whatever that means. But I want to get the name. Oh. Output for my disk. Is this S? Vendor. Oh yeah, this is what we want. So, oh my days. So we want... So there's vendor product. Yeah, but what about this? Yeah, well, some, we just want this name part as well. Like, what about the name itself? All right, let's try some of this out. Yeah, you can use the timeline semaphore for that. It's pretty good. You can, what's great about the timeline semaphore is it's just uh, incrementing 64 bit integer and you can read it back CPU and GPU, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's definitely, definitely handy. So I'm gonna try name here. Uh, let's just try name. What's that? So dev for device, let's try that out. Oh, we get a name. Oh yeah, so we're getting this. Okay, so we can read the attributes. That is good. So we can get the attributes from the cat file. Sorry, from the cat, from the proc file. Oh, why does my... My phone keep disconnecting. This is really annoying. Can't see chat. Right. I'm gonna restart my phone. So I won't be able to see you guys for a second. But I, I can still read the chat though on my computer. So the beauty of this is, is we can look through here, we can pull out the attributes and see them. So. Any of these we can see with the UDEV. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Input devices. This is only for input. So I guess there's there's PCI as well, okay. There's no output. There's also handlers. Okay.
Right. So if we run our program, we've got more, um, which is interesting. We kind of only want the ones that have event, an event, like a dev path, right? Um, have this event thing, but we can't, some of them don't have names. And there is like line in and line out for audio. And it would be interesting to see like, can we get like a parent device and that sort of thing, right? So should we, mm, Right, let's get the chat back up again. So, where's, yes, the keyboard's here, this is good. But the, one of these is the parent, right? One is the child and one's the parent, because one is, because we look at uh, X input list, you can see there's a virtual keyboard and then there's more of like the, where is it? Oh no, maybe not. Maybe not then. So yeah, we're trying, I'm trying to think like, how do we sort of like combine these into the, the, the same device when we write this device abstraction? Let's just get the chat back up on my phone. Hmm. So there's a way to get like, Parent, maybe. Oh, come on, network. Um, a device type will be interesting. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, actually, mine's a bit buggered on my phone. Oh, no, no, sorry, it's because my internet connection was gone. Yeah, no, it's good. All right, it's back. All right, chat is back on my phone. Oh, yeah, finally. All right, I can minimize that. Are you implementing a render graph in C later, or how you handle the complex pipeline stuff in Vulkan? Um, yeah, we're not doing a render graph uh, purely because we probably won't need one. Um, but so we're just doing it manually for now. So the sync code is very manual. So yeah, we just do it. Um, basically like, because we're only using compute, we're able to do it very in place. But if you're not, if you're not doing compute only, you have to probably have some form of like work graph in a way. Is that right? Yeah, you might have to have a work graph in some way. Um, mm. Yeah, it's hard to remember exactly. Yeah, because you have to remember what the state is before and then how it's used afterwards. If you're recording as you go, I don't think it's possible. But yeah, it's better if you do a work graph, but it does take work, um, time to do that. Um, hmm. So there's a way to get a parent. What's all of this? So they go over all the entries, they get the name. Block. What's this block? That, so they're able to get the, their hard drive. Get child. Oh. Hmm. So maybe we can do a thing to say scan over all the parent devices, right? That'd be, so maybe we can say like, udev iterate parent devices. Is that a thing? Because you can, because I imagine when we boot up the application, the devices can already be plugged in. 
So we won't get events for them. So it might be best to... I think we're going to have to scan over these, right? Um, so... Hmm. Udev ADM info. Oh, maybe not. All right, so it's iterate new add subsystem. What's all of this? Add match parent. Ah. Is there like a root device? Is there a root device? Not sure if there is. So let's have a bit of fun then and just say you know we'll get the parent and then get their name right so we'll say uh where is it strut udev device uh parent and that'll be equal to udev device get parent and we'll pass in dev and then i i'm sure we set to null right if the parent doesn't exist and then we're going to get the parent name. And then we'll say parent. Something like that, yeah? So let's try that out. So can it just link to itself then? Because all of them are saying pair, like, so maybe what we we'll say is like, And parent not equal to dev. Let's just try that. Did the clangs? Oh, not there. Clang. Right, so now some of these have parents, but some of them don't now. How does that one have a... Huh. Because there's only two of these devices, these Apple ones. So... Oh no, because I've put dev in there, like, like a moron. Uh, okay, right, let's try that now. Right. So this one has a parent of this touchpad, and that is the input. Okay, okay, okay. So this event is a child of this. Right, 
but this has a parent of null, uh, so the name there's no name for it. But I imagine all these Sony ones share the same thing. So we could iterate over all of the. I want to, you know, it'd be nice to have to see a tree of all of this, but there's no program that's really showing it to me. Um, but yeah, I reckon, I reckon. So we get to print out the IDs so we can just see this ourselves and just match it up. So we could print out the pointer to the device and that'll be unique. Um, but there's probably a number, there's like a, there's a sequence number. What else is there? Dev num, dev t. Um, which one is always present? The sys path? Sys path is always present. Let's try that. This name right so PC speaker yeah which one we're looking for so we're looking for the touchpad parent is this one no 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 ah huh. Interesting. Yeah, so this one is the event. So this is the event file that we're going to read to read the touchpad sensor, right? Uh, to read the events from it. Um, so there's the parent. Like its parent is this one. Then its parent is this thing which must be the same for all of the Sony things, right? So there is some other thing that we're not reading. Okay. And like with the Apple thing, oh, this is not the same. So wireless controller, this is the same. <laughs> why is it two different keyboard things? That's why I want to know for my keyboard. Like, how? So I don't know what that's going to be like. Mm. Should we dig into what the SDL2 code does? Let's see what they do. Um, so I think it's in uh, oh, source. Call Linux UDEV, that's where we were. So I know they, I know they have a poll. Right, and they receive events basically. But then like, don't they have a way that they look through the devices when they set it up? So they get a device event and they see. So I'm trying to think like, can we have like, you know, can I have this controller connected just as one device and then all the sort of sub devices all come in as one? I was trying to see, is there a way we can figure that out? To get product info, device path, vendor, product version, enumerate, scan devices, get list entry, iterate, um, um, 
So it's just trying to get the products in. So it's scanning for a vendor products and version, basically. Oh no, does it get it out? Is that an iterator of some kind? No. So this scan. Do, 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 do. So yeah, when they initialize the system, they do do a scan, as you would expect. Um, so they look for input and sound stuff. Right, we was just doing input. Um, but that's another interesting point because there's sound. There's a sound device on this one as well. This uh, gamepad. Um. So they enumerate, and also, what was that doing? Okay. Anyway, so they enumerate over all the devices, and they just do a device add, right? Or this sort of device event, device added. Okay. And then they'll go over here and so they get the device node if that's not so this tells you sometimes that's null um let's have a look on why we've got a test program so that device node which would be dev path yeah so if it doesn't have is it event yeah, if it doesn't have an event, yes. So you, if, you, if you can't pull events from it, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, okay. So I guess, I guess that's all you care about. But what, what I'm trying to sort of get is like, you know, this is all part of the same controller. So if I grab this one, which is the event for the touchpad sensor, right, because there's the parent, right how can we link the touchpad the motion sensors and the other the controller together how can we make, make that all one device um so we're doing sdl apparently so there's probably layers to this so they'll like they check whether it's a joystick i think that there's many different properties we can look at um so it all's on all these little bits so the subsystem is input interesting yeah but we only search for input anyway but yeah yeah we should look for that um You have to guess the class. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, then this gets processed via a callback by some higher system. Like I think an X, X11 oil EV dev registers for this. And yeah. So I think they handle that, but I don't know what it would do. So reg registers it as a joystick. I think they've got a higher level sort of gamepad thing in the, in here. So should we have a look at that as well? Oh, my chat's disconnected again. Hey there guys, sorry, my chat's been disconnected on my phone again. Hey there very much, how you doing? Or when I look in, put this barriers in. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The validation validation layer ca catches it. Yeah, shame. Hey there, glass. How you doing? How's my favorite vegan doing? Ah, oh, Rohan. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at this. 
Perrin might be a bus. Ah, oh, Akraz, welcome back. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it, Arbet. Thank you. <laughs> uh, right. Oh no, too many tabs. Right. USB storage, get chart. Yeah, I saw, actually I had this one. Did I? Yeah, maybe I visited this one in the past. But yeah, let's read, let's read over it. So the enumerate, this is like for USB mass storage as an example, right? Um, subsystem this, match property those things. Yeah, but I don't, and then they do get child. Um, but I, I don't know how they're going over the parents in any way. Yes, yeah, so you're saying. Yeah, then just add parent match. See, that'd be an interesting thing. How do we iterate over the parents and find the attached devices? So what Akras was saying, it might be a bus. So. Yeah, interesting. All right, let's do one of those. So. Bus three, all. Bus three. Yeah, but that's bus three, bus three. No. So what is shared amongst this controller, sensor, and touchpad? So you've got this sort of like SysFS. So they're, they're a bit different, aren't they? There's this thing that's the same for this controller, for example. There's this unique, I, I don't know what that means, but yeah, this thing could be the same. Um, so, whereas I've got this Apple keyboard where there's two things for some reason, right? So one's a keyboard. Well, I, I don't know actually, what is what? Why is, I love how it says LEDs, but there's no LEDs. Um, should we have a bit of a play with this? So let's do event 16 and 17. We'll pseudo cat that thing. 16 and 17, wouldn't it? Wait. Yeah, 16, 17. So. So I type on 16, it comes through. Then 17, I type on it and nothing comes through. Right, so 17 is the, is the weird one. So I, I know that it's got some USB devices on the edge and I have got a, a mouse being plugged into that. So this one says, keyboard. Oh, is oh, it's got a number pad. No, that's not right. No, okay, the number pad's not separate then. I don't know then. Why is sixteen and seventeen different? Uh, damn it, Twitch. Shuffle my phone. There we go. You're back. No. Uh. Hmm. Right, it's connected back on my phone again. It's good. So, uh, sixteen and seventeen. How do we tell that this one is a, this one is the keyboard that actually works, and this one is not a keyboard because like they've got the but so the interesting thing is is they you know the slightly different thing at the end here um they don't have this field right 
Um, maybe there's some flags somewhere that need processing, but the handlers are all there. Oh. So yeah, knowing what is coming off as the same device might be a bit tricky. Yeah, maybe there's a different file I can look at, but I don't know this too well. Um, there is LSUSB, I guess, right? Um, what? Show any devices, specify or bus numbers and decimal. Mm. Oh, you can dump the tree. Yes, this is what I wanted. Dash T. Boom. Right. So there's these different buses. Now, why aren't I seeing like my controller. Because that was on bus three, wasn't it? Right. Uh... Right, so there's different hub versions or whatever. I don't know what that means. Hmm. So the controller's connected and that was on bus three because when we saw, that was on bus three. Um, oh, there might be, a, is there a dev number? There is a dev in the you in the header file. Let's open up the header file properly. Well, no, we could just do this for now. Um, there's a dev a dev num, right? So maybe that could be the way that we no. Maybe not. Let's have a look. So we've got, wait, where's the Apple keyboard? Which one was that? That was on bus, is that on bus three again? Yeah, it's bus three again. Why isn't it showing bus three? So wait, LS USB this. I get my keyboard showing up, right, on bus one. Oh, it's on bus one. But then it said bus three in this thing. Apple. Hmm, that's a weird one. So this is device eight and seven, right? So they are a bit different. Let's use B. So device seven and eight, seven. So this is a USB hub, right? Which it, that it, and where's eight? Eight is here. Right, so the interesting thing is the Apple keyboard does have two USBs. I've got a mouse plugged into one of them. Um, so... If I unplug... So, wait, so okay, what is this, my... Um, I, Anchor, is it going to show up? Where's the mouse? 
Mm. Okay, if I unplug my mouse for a second. Right, so let's uh, run LSUSB. Well, this. Let's run it again. Which one is missing? <laughs> um, this one, optical mouse, which was nine. So that's here. So it's plugged into this one. So I guess by doing a tree, it might not be good. But yeah. Yeah. So this means like, so the parent doesn't necessarily mean anything because you could have USB hubs. Oh, so if the parent is a hub, do nothing, right? Yeah. So uh, why can't I, why can't I see my controllers? Sony. Well, maybe I can. Bus one. Also, on on different buses, there's a. I have no idea what bus means, but yeah. So if you're because in the this file we're seeing bus three, and they're individually broken into pieces. But on bus one, for some reason, whatever that means, we're seeing just one Sony controller, right? Um, and we're not seeing anything else. Okay. So that is device 17, but then there's th this many 17s. So there's many seven device 17s. Interesting. Audio, audio, human interface device. But we only saw Okay, so let, let's let's modify our program a little bit and have a bit of a play. So let's print out this dev number. Um, and maybe, uh, but we could we could also just look at the source code of LS USB and see what this is, right? Surely. So let's do that. LS USB source code. Like, what is that? Right, so we just want to go to the main file function or whatever. So all this, right, tree mode, no. Initialize, uh, dev dump, no, list devices, right? So you go to list devices. I, I love open source, it's so good. You can just be like, oh, how does this thing work? There you go. So get device list, libusb. Great, how does libusb work? <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, so is libusb like something that sits on top of udev? Does it use like UDEV and that sort of stuff? <laughs> UDEV, dun 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 dun. List devices. Scan devices. Dun 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 dun. dun. Um, oh, bus number, device address. So get device info, there's this thing. It 
So they look for a USB subsystem. Right. So, right, let's change it to USB subsystem, have a play with that. Um, so let's comment that one out. And that means, could you get the children of that? So if you, But then like devices could be connected in different ways up by Bluetooth. Right, and having it as input is a, a level on top of that, right? So maybe we're looking for subsystem USB is not the right idea. Um, but let's, let's see, right? So Clang compile that guy and then we'll launch it. We're getting a ton of stuff. I was hoping to get a name. Um, let's comment that one out. All right, getting some a little bit more sensible. Well, no, just something consistent, but not really sensible. Um. So they've got like a sys name here. And just be which property this device. Hmm. Match property dev type USB device. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the way to go. Maybe it is. Where's the iterator? Here it is, yeah? Uh, scan devices, list entry, blah, blah, blah. Let's delete that now. So they use a thing called device info. Can't see that here. So this is probably their own function. Yep. Get device node, sys name, and Linux device address. But with you, sys name, right? Sys name is down here. So we do use that. Do dev node as well. Oh man. So I have to unref it as well. And I don't do. Oh, I do do that. Um, okay. USB four. Oh, so these. This is the sys name thing that we. But how how are they getting the name? Right. So I guess if we go back up to that list of devices, they're showing. Bus device ID SNS S is vendor and product. Right, so just showing a string of the vendor and product. We can get that easily. Um, okay. So I, I, I for which way you got to do it. If I oh yeah yeah, yeah it's this one. So const char star vendor. Products, they're like these attributes. 
right? So what we can do is we can use, we can now display these. So we'll just say like name, vendor, or oh, vector, <laughs> vendor product. Oh yeah. So, um, Right, sometimes the uh, vendor is null, apparently. Well, it's always null. Why is it null? Did I, did I get the vendor wrong? I saw it saw in some other example code. Is it this example code I saw it in? Sys, get sys attribute value. ID vendor, ID products. We're not looking for the IDs, but it's good to know those exist. Vendor. Hmm, which one is null again? They're all null. See, there's the controller. That's good to know if we could somehow link that to the five different controllers there are. And there's the Apple keyboard. Or oh, it might be a hub. Let's have a look at that. Um, so it's a bit weird that some of it is a... So let me do that get child with a different subsystem. Interesting. Check if there is a, a TTY USB device for the controller. How, how does one do that? Didn't know that was a thing you could do. Vendor, vendor. How is it coming through as null every time? That is the question. Right, get vendor with fallback. Do, 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 do. Ah, read property manufacturer. <laughs> no. So is he getting the vendor from here? In, in you dev what about they're not using this get sys attribute thing in the so how are they getting the vendor name In the LS USB. Reading it from some place. Huh. Hmm. Manufacturer property.
I guess. Or TTY USB. Right. Yeah, I've, I've not seen this TTY USB show up on the controller. Um. I didn't know you could do that, have that. Let's have a look. TTY USB of no, I don't see any here. Um. Right, so the thing is, if you so if you can get a device through this USB thing, then you have to do like Bluetooth and all of that. Right. Um, in the future, or some other way that it could be connected. But, so if you can look at the USB subsystem, so what sort of UDEV subsystems are there? Subsystem list. Hmm. I made an entire app with Raspberry Pi without UDEV, just using TTY USB. I also found out that my joystick was doing a serial on for many stuff. Right. I never knew USB, TTY USB was ever a thing. But yeah, I'm just trying to use UDEV to give me a list of devices, but it's seeming more complicated than it should be. You know, I was hoping to be more of like a tree or like a you know like you know I, I, I would respect that a USB device creates more you know can plug in and, and be many things but I wouldn't expect it to have been this complicated um So it will be interesting to see, like, like you can iterate of the children, right? So should we try and pinpoint, like, we've got. So yeah, I can't quite get that vendor name for some reason, but we can we can see that it is the Sony device here. There's the Apple keyboard there, right? As well, that's an interesting one. So what we should do is we should say, oh, this is USB. Oh, the parent is USB 1. Okay, that doesn't matter. This is SysPath 1-4. Um, but yeah, if... Should we try that ID vendor thing and see what happens? But yeah, I'm thinking about iterating over the... Um, Right, it's not showing sure up either. I'm thinking about it's rating over all of the uh, children in a second. Yep. Yeah. So it's just a device. But you can get vendor from ID vendor, ID this. 
But maybe you could get it from the child. Is there a way to list all of the different attributes that it has? So how, do they have a way to iterate over all the... Huh. Iterate uh, system attributes. Do 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 We just want to find like a good list of system attributes. There's product, product ID, this vendor ID. But I guess like this one is probably, these ones are probably always set. See, product was not set. Or vendor was not set. See, so it might be good just to get the IDs at least. Just roll with that. Turn them into integers. Um... Yeah, it's not showing vendor in any of this list here. All right. So, you know what, we'll leave We'll leave products to be printed out, but let's go and get ID vendor, ID product. Uh, ID vendor. That way we can just, just do easy if statements. Try manufacturer. Right, yeah, we did see that earlier for LSUSB and I didn't bother trying it for some reason. We'll, try, we'll give it a go. Manufacturer. All right, let's give that a give that a swirl. Oh my days! You're right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know why I didn't try that. That worked. It doesn't work for all of them, but it works for most of them. Right. So now we get the fact that it's a keyboard hub, so meaning USB hub, and then we get the Apple keyboard here. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Taos, Taos Spieler. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so now I reckon what we can do is we can go right, go over each of the children of these USB devices. So we can probably get attributes to know that it is maybe a keyboard or something. No, no, no it's probably not a good idea because this could have a hub, isn't it? So, well, yeah, this hub keep go, you know, it go through the next layer. Um, maybe something like this. No, maybe just ignore it because it will show up anyway. Because the the uh, the mouse should be here as well, right? It's not just showing the root devices; it's just showing USB devices in general. Would hope. Or I'm going to unplug my mouse again and run it. Right, so which one of these is uh, is missing? So USB, this, that, that. Hmm, it's quite hard to tell. We'll run another one side by side. So let's just scroll up to here. 
open up a new tab, drag it out, detach. Right, so we're seeing, so one will show up. Let's make the text the same size. Um, Apple, Apple, USB optical mouse. I don't know why I didn't see that right away, but it, okay, it's there. Right, so what that means is we just ignore hubs, look for mice, keyboards, and controllers, right? Hopefully that's a thing we can do. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice to get those vendor IDs. Like I, th I think we're gonna need these guys, so we'll leave them in there. But yeah, there, there's the, um, we'll turn that into a some uh, form of uh, integer, because it'll probably be good to keep hold of those. And then we need a way to iterate over all of the children. So I'm going to close a lot of this now because I don't, I just don't need it. We can always just search for it again. Um, so this one goes over all, all the, um, I, I don't know, all the USB mass storages or whatever it does. But then it's able to look at all the block, the block subsystem devices that are children to this one, which is interesting, right? So it must mean hey, find all the input devices that are the child of this one, find all the sound devices, you know, all of that sort of stuff, right? That'd be, that might be interesting, but also, uh, yes, yeah, so I think let's try that first. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to detect, hey, is my parent a keyboard? Or, or like what, what things does it say it is? You know, maybe that's possible. So let, let's try this get child thing first. Um, so what we're going to try now is, we're not really getting a child, but I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just call it, um, scan, scan, um, child devices, right? Um, so we get the parent, then subsystem comes in. Obviously we're not, we're gonna change that. Um, so we're doing new iterator or enumerator. Um, and then we're going to say, here's our parent. We're gonna look for input just for now. You know, obviously it could be audio later and some other, other things. Um, but then we wanna do some printing again. So let's try and do this. Um, what did we do before? We did a system Was it sys name? No. There was a get name thing that we did, I think. It might have been sys name. But that doesn't always show. Yeah, we'll do this one. I don't, I don't think we'll uh, use this at the, in the end, though. But it's just for now. So we'll just be like printf tab found or like child, um, we'll do a number, uh, new line, and we'll do a string, then we'll put in this sort of name here, and then we'll do a, all right, what? Conversions. Oh shoot, I forgot about that. Uh, index int index equals zero. Oh yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna. I don't know what's going on here. Moved to umref numerate. Okay, fine. Uh, we we'll get rid of that. Avoid that guy. Then we're just going to scan the child devices. So I think this could be something interesting at least. Hopefully it's going to yield good results. So is it dev? Dev then what again? Parent. Wait. Uh, is it you dev? 
you dev then dev. Okay. So fingers crossed this yields good results. <laughs> uh. Right. Something looks a little, a little fishy. Um, did I want to show sis name? Dev node, maybe? Dev node might be a good one. Because dev node will give us the event thing, right? It will give us event 16 or whatever it is, you know, like the thing that we can actually read, the file scripts that we can read to get the events. Right, so still this USB bus thing. So maybe there's more children in here. I don't know why we're going over so many though. Um, wait a minute. Right, this is for the Sony controller. This makes sense because there's... No, it does it. We did say the input subsystem. Uh... Mm. Oh my days, you plonker. I just passed in the same thing again. Uh, yeah, so we need to actually get the device name. Where is it? Aha, uh -huh. device from name. Yeah, we need to do this thing. Const char star name. This will be called dev node. Um, I've already done it. Oh, it's called path here. <laughs> uh, right, so we get rid of that. Call it name, I guess. Then this needs to get the device. Where's the device? This one from system path. Uh, strut udev device star this thing. Then we say dev there. There we go. So that'll give us hopefully a good name. Clang. Right. Good, 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 good. So now this one, see these got the event things, right? These are the ones we're looking for. So one of these would be the controller. One of these would be the uh, motion and the other one would be the touchpad, the mouse, right? Um, so we just want to look out for these event ones and there's, there's a flag probably to find that. And then on the optical mouse, we've got this one here. On the keyboard, we've got two. So we've got to figure out how do we distinguish between the working one and the non-working one. Um, but yeah, so this is getting good. This is getting really good. So, okay. Um, so we could obviously just check to see what the name is and that it is event, but there's probably something uh more sensible so if we look at sdl i think they do, do they do something where they they get property things no maybe not um get property value i'm not sure what that is right source uh sorry user include lib udev right so we're looking in here for so there's this get property value it's weird that you've got that and this sys attribute right um but anyway okay um so but we're trying to see like is there some enumeration it seems to be very 
string heavy in this API. You know, anything you seem to get seems to be a string, uh, which is kind of a shame. But I'm hoping so there's a dev a dev type. Um, that dev type might help. Let's try that. String uh, dev. No, no, no. Amazing. Not. So the dev type basically yielded nothing. Um, so we want to, there's a get driver. No. So what other things could we look at that could help us? I know when we cat did a cat on this result, this um, devices thing, I think there was a way to tell if something had like, there was some flags or something. There's some like, uh, hmm, that you can tell whether something is a gamepad or not. I think there's like a flag, but um. UDEV device properties. Yeah, this is it. What's the difference between properties and attributes in UDEV? Properties are set by UDEV rules and can be modified by other rules. Attributes are read by UDEV from sysfs nodes, assigning the value to the attribute in the UDEV rule cases. Right, a value to the sys affects the device behavior. Right, so changes the behavior of the device. Yeah, so maybe we can sort of enumerate the properties or enumerate the attributes. That'd be an interesting thing we could try and do. So I think it's quite simple. So there's a way to get a list entry and then you can do that iterator basically. So you can do, you can probably do this, right? And then you get like a list entry. And then what that means we can do is we can hopefully do like this, another for loop thing, right? So I guess we'll just say like ATTR entry. Right, see you soon, Bernie Montana. Enjoy your foods. Um, so I think we can do this, right? And then we can say dev. Then we can say do another for each. And then you can do like an entry get name. Now I kind of forgot. Oh, there's a get name and get a value. Interesting. So sometimes they might have, have names and not have names. It's, it's, kind, it's kind of a nice API, but it's just, you, you just got to know like what are all of the things, what do all the things mean in the API? You know, it, se it seems quite nice to use. Oh, ho, ho, soul foam. How you doing? Welcome back, buddy. How's things been? Thank you so much for the, uh, the sub. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, how you been? So we should be able to now get the, so we should be able to be like, oh, and then this thing has this value. So ATTR, ATTR, S, S, equal S, right? And you can just do get name, get value. So this will be ATTR entry, not devices. Oh. ATTRs, ATTR entry, ATTRs, ATTR entry. Uh, so it's just a link list, right? Good old link list values. 
Right, here we go. Wait, do we do a double tab? We didn't do a double tab, that would have been confusing. Cell phone, cell phone buddy, how's things going? Oh, wait, it didn't compile it again. Right, now we're in business. So, this is great. We can now actually just scan, like, if I just take this API and put it everywhere, we'll be able to see everything that's going on and extract exactly what we need, hopefully. Well, or maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I don't get all the information I actually want. So, let's, let's quickly um, do that. Let's do it for the properties as well. Let's just see everything. Um, you know, let's make a thing just... Ooh, no, it's not make a thing. It's copy and pasteable. Um, ATTR. Right, call it prop. Prop, prop, prop. Prop, 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 prop. Uh, Proprietor. List entry. So there's more list entry things, right? There's dev links, tags. Right, there's tags as well. So let's... Let's just look with these guys and let's just hope this is enough. If not, we've got to look at tags and that. But this is, should hopefully be good enough. So, right. Let's go to the Sony control. Let's go to the Apple uh, keyboard. Oh. Good mate, been uh, traveling actually. How's things been here? Yeah, not been bad. Uh, it's been preparing for the baby um, and uh, yeah, working um, and yeah, it's about it really. Just working, preparing for baby, you know. Um, yeah, but things are going good though. Things are going good. Um, in terms of this project, we got a graphic subsystem done. We've got custom allocators and custom collections. So we've got our own stack, hash table, and object pool. We're just currently working on, we've got, um, we're working on multi-keyboard and gamepad support. Um, so we've been able to detect multiple keyboards through X11. So we're just trying to figure out how to use UDEV to get the list of devices and not go to, we want, a sort of high level idea of what a device is and then all of its individual pieces. Like this thing has like five devices on it or more. It's got like sounds, motion controls and everything. They're all separate, but then like you want to individually get the events from those, but also get, um, individually get the events and also, um, but also know it's a Sony PlayStation controller and have it all in one device. Awesome, good to see. Once the baby comes around, you're going to keep stream schedule going. Yeah, I'm going to try. Um, so when the baby comes, which is actually probably pretty soon, is due in like two weeks. But, you know, the baby's big, so it could come out any time. Um, so... Yeah, I, I probably will like, as soon as the baby comes, uh, it's probably going to, you know, it's my first child, so we probably might, like, I'm pretty unsure about what's going to happen. But uh, I probably might take, like, maybe a week off or something like that, as a, that's my sort of idea. And things, sh we'll have to see how things go from there, but hopefully this, the same schedule can stay. Uh, we just got to figure it out. Here's all. Be uh, always on the ground, damn straight. Right, so all these properties. So we're looking at seeing like, so there's ID input, there's ID input key, there's ID input keyboard. That's interesting. And I know, you know, looking at the X11, looking at the SDL code, they sort of do this. Right, and I guess there's no standard way. Has keys, and this is a keyboard. Undocumented rule is all devices with key from this subset, if they have escaped numbers, Q to D, also gets an ID keyboard. <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> Oh, 
what, what, why, why do people do stuff like this? System D. You dev. I have no idea what I'm reading. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Um, yeah, just gotta figure figure the thing out, you know. <laughs> just how how to, you know. Hoping hoping it's all pretty calm. Um, you know, got I've got a whole month off work, which is good. So there's plenty of time to work things out. It has to look after the baby. Um, you know, all the do's and don'ts. So, and I have to fit him into our lives. But yeah, he's, he's got his own room already. But obviously, he'll sleep in with us at the, uh, at the start. Um, but yeah, I've got a boy as well. So, good to, uh, good to see. Yeah. Good to see you got a boy first. So I'm happy about that. Then I want my, I want my second to be a girl, but we'll see. See how that goes, right? 50 50 chance. I don't always ID input key. Should we have Google for that? Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 Who designs this stuff? ID input key. Keyboards have this, but also things like LID switches, which have just a few buttons. Right, so you just want to ignore that one and call it keyboard then, basically. So input means all input devices. Mouse means touchpads, tablets have this flag as well. Since device acts as mouse, this tablet, touchscreen, and joystick. Um, I was hoping there's more things, right? So, but this is this is interesting at least, right? So if we scroll up to the other Apple one, right, right, no. It seems to have a keyboard on it. But this is the bug, wait, no, child zero. Oh, we ignore that one. Event 16, it's got a keyboard on it. Wait, is it 16, wait, 16 was the one that we wanted, but then 17 was the one that we didn't want. Because it, it did, it literally did nothing. Um, which is a shame. But, but I guess it doesn't matter if we pick up more than one keyboard because we'll just say, you know, hey, play, like, like, player, you know, uh, you know, a player maybe wants to, like, select their device. They won't go through a drop down and be like, I want that Apple keyboard. They would, like, press a button on the keyboard, right? Um, so I, I don't think it's a problem if we oh, if we get too many then. It just would have been nice to sort of not bring it in, you know, to the list. Because 17, event 17, we wired it, we wired it in, right? Oh yeah, also we need to know if it's one of these event node ones, right? We need to know this. So we'll look for that. But then it says input key... Oh, no, this is 16. <sighs> right, where's 17? Aha, input key, excellent. So this hasn't got keyboard. Bam. Uh, they grow up, they grow up quick, man. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. They do grow quick. Yup. Hopefully, like, by, hopefully I can finish this game by the time they're sort of like, you know, an age where they can start understanding and playing playing games by themselves. That'd be pretty cool. What's your overall quality? 
go off this game? Like, are you trying to make the art yourself? Pre-made assets? What level of texture work, if any? Etc. I assume that being a graphics programmer primarily, you cool. You're gonna do some cool standard shader unit effects to bring up the overall visuals. So basically, the plan is. So the plan is right now get the core engine together, right? So we're kind of nearly there in a way. We're doing the input stuff, right? After this, so we've we've got like our core collections and stuff we're doing the inputs now so we can have all these inputs so uh, you know I, I, I you know i was saying like i'll just do the bare minimum so we can get up running and do some r d but then i've kind of fallen into this rabbit hole of doing like this really interesting you know picking up on the key every keyboard and every controller and doing multi-keyboard and stuff like this um and the question is would you need this in the game that you're, you're making and the, the question is, the answer is like, I don't know, but in by making this decision, and I will get, I will get to your answer, Solfo, I'm remembering it, it's just sub-tangent. Um, but in doing so, I think this is going to lead into like, you know, I'm going to feel guilty implementing this and not using it. So I think it's going to force me into making a game that is like couch co-op couch friendly, at least. Um, which is something I want to do anyway. So I think like this will force me into doing it. So I think it's another aspect. Um, going back to the graphics thing, after um, after we've got the input in, we're doing UI. And the first bit of graphics R&D we're doing is 2D, right? We're gonna do some 2D rendering for UI. We're doing a nice quick and easy UI. After that, we're doing some graphics R&D, like 3D. And we're gonna try and do something where we, um, where it's a bit non-traditional, you know, it's not it's not gonna be with triangles. Um, I don't really wanna talk about exactly what it is, um, cause that'll kind of spoil it. But um, I think I'm gonna have an editor where I can sort of make assets in the game. So what I need to do is I need to make, so when we're gonna figure out things like, can I load this custom made graphics thing? Uh, what sort of is the lighting gonna be? You know, how big and how small are certain things in this rendering, custom rendering thing, all done with compute shaders. Um, um, you know, like how, how, what sort of, we wanna find the art style, right? And then with that, we can we can then uh, go and do d decide what game I want to make from there. Um, so I think the the graphic the graphics is definitely very unknown what it wants to be, but I think we want to try and find at least some form of art style, and then like and and maybe do like one or two like polished things, and even have some like animations working. And maybe multi and doing like many instances of those and seeing how it is, and then like um maybe and just just having to play with it right, and maybe like build build a landscape right um and then just sort of and then from there, I have the like the technical capabilities of this engine and the art style uh in a way, and then I can sort of like do go into game dev design mode. For a bit and then come back to doing the graphics again you know what i mean so th i think that that's that this is the that's the idea of what we're going with um so yeah hopefully we shouldn't be uh too long until we get to the graphic stuff but yeah, be that's the sort of plan but yeah lots of shader tricks basically wow first kid amazing congratulations just tuning in as a junior dev awesome can you imagine the gap of knowledge experience law? That's awesome. Nice. Good stuff. Um, yeah, man. What um what 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 was your uh what's your are you junior dev and game dev in some way or graphics or what sort of area? Good to hear PW Blue Sky. Thank you so much. So yeah, this is this is 
interesting. I think we've got good information now. So we can look for input mouse with this prop. Now the question is how do we know it's one of these event dis like file descriptors? So you look at dev name, right? Apparently, but what we want to try and find maybe like one, one of these things that says one, uh, or maybe, maybe is dev name. So if we look at this one, is, is there a dev name? There's no dev name here. There's a dev path. So let's look for dev name. Dev name, oh, there's a mouse here. This is not good, right? So that's a no-go. There's an ID type and that's HID, right? There's an ID type, HID still, damn it. Uh, we're trying to see if there is a way to tell for event. Hey there, Nico. How you doing? Full stack web at startup. Cool. Been there for 1.5 years. Just started to get interested in this stuff. Cool. That's cool, man. Good to see you getting interested in the low levels. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I started off as a web dev. Um, and it took me to me a fair bit to switch over to the sort of the game dev side. But I'm glad glad you're liking the sort of lower level side side of game dev because most people nowadays typically just uh, use a use a game engine. But yeah, nice. Um. Yeah, how's things going, Nico? How you been? Thank you for the raid last time. Appreciate it. Um. Yeah, you can do it. You got this. Oh. Where is it? Where's the way to tell that this thing is an event? Like, the easiest way is doing a string comparison, right? Dev name, and then we check to see if it's like slash dev input event. That's the easiest way, considering what we have. But there's more things, right? The kernel detects this. The hardware input device is presented at boot or gets hot plugged. The kernel detects this and creates a new input device. And then it creates an event interface for it. Ba -da -da and a device node for it. Which, oh, device node. Device node. Hmm. Which you can use to talk to the input device. So we're trying to see if there's like a device node thing. Like we want to know if it's, wait, you can just search device node. Ah, oh, but dev node showed up. No, it's null. Wait a minute. Yeah, it showed up here. This is a device node for mouse. Wait, but is that the thing you read for the event? It is, isn't it? I don't know. So let's look for this mouse thing. Event 15 knows an event for it. Damn it. Oh. There's two things. So how do we tell the difference between this and this? This and this. But isn't that the same as, uh, what was it? Keyboard?
Doing well, except for someone made me write super fast today. Ah. Oh, great. Was it full of those stood unique putters and those um, IO streams? You know. Did you did you get your good uh, good dose of inheritance in your virtual functions? Hmm. Too many CPPs. Ah, good dose of the STLs and the STDs. Yeah. Oh yeah, and same compile times. Yeah, speaking about compile times, here's my uh, benchmark for it. You ready? Bum ba da bum 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 benchmark. So basically, I went and made a. Uh, I went and made a benchmark for my own custom growable array type in C, where it's ba you know, and I, I made it compile 130 different data types, um, and then it like resized an array and then like uh, a capacity and then like filled every element in or something like that. And I did it for standard vector as well, right? And the results is astonishing. Like it's absolutely insane. So see the benchmarks down here, here they are. So the compile time for my custom C1 was 0 0.174 seconds for 100. Wait, how many was it? 130 different data structures being used in, in, a, in a global array. And this was the size of the executable and the main function size was only this, right? Then if you do it for the, the standard vector one, it goes from 0 0.2 seconds basically to 3.4 seconds to compile an application with 130 different data structures using standard vector, which is, which is basically like gonna happen in a game, right? If you're using it everywhere, right? The size of executable was one megabyte. And okay, the main function size didn't change, but, but yeah, like it's pure bonkers. Now, the amount of code that gets generated from these things. And people are like, oh, templates are fine. Yeah, using using standard standard uh, temp template libraries is absolutely fine, apparently. But then people don't like just do do the simple test. Like it's an Yes, das. Yes, das das the das. I'm honestly sad about the state of everything though. Things are just getting harder every year for no reason, especially with the relationships with graphic to graphics. Yeah, definitely. Everything that is made is made for bigger engines, insane control and super complex APIs and it's messy as F. Lots of things are way messier than ever than they ever need to be. Lots of people getting defaulted using web and cross-platform APIs to the point where default browsing is everything. Yeah, but even if you like use the stuff that people make on the web nowadays, it's just crap. Like they just make like things littered with adverts and it's slow as hell. And like, yeah, there's just too many layers. And then like you try and, like, yeah, as you're saying, you learn the low level dev stuff. And it's, what's FB? Is that Facebook vector? Okay. No, I've not tried those things, but yeah, they might be better. Yeah, um, they could be better than a standard template library. And this is on like, like Clang, whatever Clang's one is. Maybe it's GNU's one. But yeah, um, yeah, it is sad. Like that, this stuff is so overly complicated. Like as you see, I'm just trying to get my input devices from the operating system and trying to figure this stuff out is you know it's it's it's, it's nearly rocket science yeah I'm ne nearly as complicated as landing a rocket on the moon right but, but not quite but it's getting close then you combine that with like all of all of the um you know graphics stuff there's a, it's a lot but no wonder why people just you know 
Like it was so easy to su- to suggest to someone who was just doing a 2D game, write your your own engine and use SDL. But then like Vulkan came along and then the mandatory thing to use Metal on Apple devices. And then it's like now now that that sort of thing is is uh, getting less and less um but yeah. Center vector is designed for a per template machines. So every time you you drill down vector, you're uncovering at least ten layers of inheritance. Crazy. Yeah, doesn't it use like unique pointer and all these other things in there? Like it's just using more and more templates. Uh, yeah. So let's see if there's any more UDEV UDEV bits that we can iterate over and see if we can distinguish. So we looked at properties and sys attributes. So there's also tags, right? And there's also, there's a thing called a driver. Is that a good idea? There's there's something in here that can help us. Should we go over all the tags as well then? Let's do tags. Oh yeah. So there's like a tags compile run. Um absolutely nothing. No tags. No tags there either. All right, next one. Tags were useless. And there's current tags, no. Dev links. Dev links could be interesting. Um, but then we've got to look at all the rest of the stuff as well. Yeah, that's made for determining a reference count in. No reference count unless you need a reference for I was using my own C++ vector array, all in all one place, just the features I use. Yeah, for me, yeah, exactly. Like I was just about to do a, a a new a new video to sort of about this project on YouTube, like a devlog, right? And it was about collections, and I was going to speak about just you know rolling your own collection that's fixed sized. It's way better. Or just for your project, right? For me, I want it to be fixed size allocation and do the allocators this way and, you know, that sort of thing. Let's try this dev links thing out. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Dev links. Right, see if any of these are the things that we want. Compile with Clang. Right, dev link. Ooh, that's not right, is it? So this one has a dev link of these guys. All right, dev link is not what you want. That's interesting because dev link basically links to the device. Um, and we could have used that as a key bus, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So we want to try and figure out how do we know if it's an event versus a just one of those because it's got mouse on it anyway. We could copy all of this and put it into a temporary thing, right? Let's try that. All right, there's some bells and whistles. Find some more bells and whistles. Okay, side by side view, please. Can I detach that? 
Do, 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 do. So what dev links? Right, dev name, bus, input, mouse, model ID, the same, PCI, revision 14, HOD, and this zero. USB serial. Um, major minor subsystem input. Hmm. See, they basically got both the same things on them. That's not good. So there must be something in in these. So we're going to get all of these now and just display them. And then hopefully that should tell us the difference. There's also like get driver as well. I want to get that one. Get action. Sure, I'll get action. Uh, cool. So we're going to print out all of these as well on the child. So we'll just dump that, record a macro, um, print F dash T dash T. Uh, we'll do a, we'll do a sort of like, go and get that, go back to there, dump that there, put a string in new line put that there. Um, Dev, cool, go back to the start of the line and we've got like eight of those. Nice, so let's try this out. Hopefully there's a distinguishing factor here. Uh, search for mouse. So, oh, sis name, this could be a one, right? Aha, uh -huh. okay, we'll do the string, we'll get sis name. Uh, and we'll just use, we'll do that as the, the qualif, the, the thing, the distinguishing thing, right? So we've got, okay. So we've got, we've got enough. We've figured out that now, uh, with the mouse. Well, what about the game pad? Um, so a game pad, uh, with the Sony dual sense controller, isn't it? Um, so with this guy. So, okay, let, let's do that thing where we check to see if the, uh, wait, which one is it again? Sis name. So we want to go, hey, is sis name. If we only care about the, ch uh, well, I don't know, because you could. You know, technically there's the sound devices we want to look at, isn't it, really? So, you know, we're going for a lot of crap here, but... Right, so here's the Sony wireless control. Let's go through all of these. Some of these could be the sound devices, I think. Oh, no, no, they're all... They're all under input. Uh, should we do sound as well? Oh, boy, get ready. Just made my first software dev article. Awesome, MK Slug, what was the article one? AI processor. From my experience as a Linux dev, would you recommend, would you recommend that works freely with Linux and understand what do you recommend to work freely with Linux and understand it very well? Um, 
So the truth is, when I first started using Linux, I probably understood it a lot more than I do now. Um, there's there is quite a lot to Linux, and I'm just, like what I'm talking about is like from a system admin point of view, like where all the different files are. Like I'm I'm kind of learning some different stuff that I'd never learned before about this UDev thing and how USB devices all connect up. Um, you know, but in terms, I guess you mean you need to grasp it very well, like you know. Using, you know, if you want to learn Linux, run it. Run it on your computer, download Manjaro. It's probably the best distro out there. It comes pre-installed with the latest and greatest stuff. Um, and use it. Develop on it. Make programs on it. And, uh, yeah. The best thing to do is uh, Google for the things that you need to know. And you do that by using something or trying to do something you're not going to sort of learn something by randomly reading like stuff like the way the way that i accumulate knowledge is just by doing a whole bunch of different things which are interesting and um learn stuff that way really obviously i do forget stuff right but um typically when i come back around and learn it again it's a lot easier um but yeah no, Ubuntu is is the worst distro ever, but it's the most popular one for some reason. It's always got bugs. Everyone who comes over and says Linux is terrible basically uses Ubuntu. Um, like obviously every every operating system has has its problems, right? Um, but you 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 want to use Manjaro. Um, Manjaro is a good distribution uh you will have to kind of be technical to use it though you know you can't give it to your grandma it's not you know probably a grandma friendly distribution but if you're a tech guy manjaro is a good operating system why, why is my internet i have all of the megabits per second why is this taking s anyway manjaro even if the website doesn't load this one Right, so, well, yeah, so I guess we can th we can see sound devices as well, right? But, um, so we're looking for like, um, so there's input, it's got a joystick bit, right? But do we know if, so yeah, this is not the one that we want. Let's find the event one, right? Let's get to the event. Event this, it's got the joystick bit. Is there any sort of like gamepad bit? Anything tells us it's like a gamepad in any way? I don't think it does, right? It would be interesting to see what SDL does with this. Maybe is is every joystick become a gamepad? Um, you know, but then there's, there's this JS thing, right? It's just the old API. Um, we don't want to use that one. We want to use the new event API. Um, yeah, should we should we just check through the SDL source code quick? Um, but yeah, then then they've got the like motion stuff. Um, so we scroll down here. Uh, this is the motion. Where's the bugger? Ah, oh, accelerometer. There you go. So there's some accelerometer bits and bobs. So um, anyways, check for the. Uh, so they do some like event listeners. Oh, forget this code but so we go into ooh, video x11 and then there's something like there is a mouse there's events um x input 2 i see i've gone i've i've gone and did this without looking at x at SDL, but I didn't realize they had an, an implementation here. I could have seen how it worked, damn it. But did they do, uh, anyway, they wouldn't do it X input to where's the old oh, joystick. 
Gamepad mapping. Right, so they do it on the, at the joystick level. So how do they tell if something is like a gamepad? Hey there, Buffer. How you doing? Buffer overflow. Nah, I don't think it's the number bandwidth. I think it's Manjuro. I got like a hundred and hundred. 50 down, 100 up. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so, in, there is EV dev actually thinking about it. Source Core Linux SDL EV dev. That's event device. And you use, you use this for your game pads. Right. So, When they do a device added, there's a UDEV class, interesting, but maybe this is a custom thing they have. Yeah, it's a custom thing. Right, so. Do they not do gamepads in here? So this is obviously EV dev when you have it without X11 because you can't do m mice and keyboard through here. Um, do they have like a joystick at least? Joystick return? The joysticks are done through a different thing. This is based on the joystick driver. No, 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 no. Joysticks done in a separate place. They're not done in there. So should we look for, we'll grep for that. Grep UDEV joystick. No, 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 grep dash R you silly. Oh, come on. Um. So sys joystick. They must just do it. So the event listener must, or the, the callback that they have must just be in that joystick thing that I was looking at before then. Fair play. So device joystick. Device added. If it's not a joystick, bail. So then they say maybe add device, which then that means uh, how do they check if it's a gamepad then? Do they do anything special? Is joystick. Check if it's not already in the list. What they're looking for. Path. Yeah, I wonder how they they link link their devices together. Cause they've got like must have like a, a sensor of some kind, like an accelerometer, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, so they've got a. I guess the gamepad thing that sits on top. Should we go and find that one then? It, it must just be on a layer on top. Game controller. What is it? Is under joystick then? Core game? No, 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 no GDK. Um, what well, am I building a core joystick? Because they have like a. Oh, joystick game? No. Gamepad.c, this looks like it. So you can initialize. Oh, yeah, if I remember the SDL source code, sorry, um, API. They have a way to initialize the gamepad on top of a joystick or something like that. But then they, they do like a, right, let's remember this. 
Yeah, like we're not we're not going to be doing an API that's like this in any way, but it's just we're trying to find like we're trying to find how do they tell that it's a game controller and what what are they doing there just to see what they do. Um So may have a way to open it. You get like a game controller pointer. Yeah, yeah. Is is game controller. Check see if it is a game controller interface. Um okay. Uh grep. Is game controller. Uh, is game pad. All right, that was in here. Uh, get private game map. Private game mapping. <laughs> what? What? So you get some mapping. So the way they check if it's a gamepad is literally if they have a mapping file for it, right? Um, and that's it, right? So there's no special source. They just say they've got a map, they have like a mapping for like all these controllers and then they just get it back out. Fair enough, right? So that's one way you could do it is, it is explicitly identify every controller that you support. But that yeah. We've got to we gotta see yeah, we've got to see really what problems writing game because I've heard SDL is great because it supports all these controllers. But how easy is that? And then I've heard on Windows it that the there's no standard button. Buttons, so you have to remap every controller anyway. Um, so the interesting thing is, is, is that the same problem on other platforms? Yeah. Yeah, SDL is quite easy. You know, it's got some things that I prefer to be done differently, but also I want to try and do some interesting things that other games don't do. They use SDL, like we've done multiple keyboards. Rodos just use Raspberry Pi for the main system. I'm right in Rust. Sounds right. And real devs are also vegans. You know. M much cheaper that way. Just eat grass, you know. <laughs> um Glass, you you are a vegan. What's 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 going on? You myself. Imagine <laughs> compost for breakfast, yeah. Imagine. Oh, I'm out of Coke. Uh, I did SDL for my very tiny OpenGL3 renderer for my personal project. Awesome. Yeah, SDL2 is great. I'm just trying to learn, learn the underneaths. And also because I hate myself. Clearly. Okay, so we've got we've got answers now, right? So I think we've finally got all the answers. So the plan now, all right, <laughs> the plan. <laughs> There's never been a plan. The plan is we need to write, we need, okay. Should we go, high, we've been doing low level the past couple of streams, but I think we got it all. Should we start doing something high level for now and have a bit of fun? Because right, we've just been diving in and being like, is this possible? And like just figuring out, like doing research, research, research. But I think, oh. so the basic idea is, is we'll load, we'll come into the application, we'll iterate over all the devices. Wait, do we need to see what happens if you plug a device in? Yeah, if you plug a device in, oh. 
we need to look at, into that. But let, let's go with step one. So let's go to our game uh, uh, game engine project. So basically, os os.h. Like we're gonna be plugging in devices and things like this. Um, so we might have like a device ID, right? Now, device is a beautiful. So the idea, so we could have we could have input devices, we could have output devices, and you have you know maybe we can have sound coming in and then sound going out and stuff like this. That could be another thing. Uh, or input as in, no input as in keyboard input, and then maybe sound could be. That's the thing about microphones and stuff. Did a microphone show up in that one in any way? Was that showing up as input or does the input mean like? Good question. What does input mean? Input means all input devices. Amazing, that's exactly. So imagine it's just all of these guys, right? But not necessarily microphone. That's probably under sound devices. Right, so we can ignore, so we'll call this input device. And then we'll, we'll have like, we'll have a, an enumeration, uh, input device. Oh yeah. So it's gonna be OS input device, mouse, keyboard. And obviously the mouse is the most important, so we put it first, you know? And put the gamepad. So, um, right. Maybe we'll have more, but there you go. So there's probably going to be like properties that you might get on these on these mice, uh, which might be interesting. Does it have like a motion, like an accelerometer on it, right? Stuff like this, you know. Uh, some of these things might be interesting, like gamepad properties, maybe. But uh, I imagine like we could, so it might be like a union, I don't know, OS input device. We'll probably just keep it as a structure, right? But we'll probably just unionize it in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the device here, wait, that's meant to say type. Sorry, I'm being a, doing a silly. I've been programming, just been doing research, lost all my skills. There we go. So um, there was a union inside, right? Tags union, the unsafe way. Um, and then we'll probably put in like, you know, I guess it might be good to do like um, mouse. I think we have one of those internally. So we might expose it. Shoot. We can either expose it in a public way or a private way. If we expose it publicly, publicly we can just give you a const pointer anyway. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Isn't isn't G, the GNU folks writing a Rust compiler? Aren't they? So maybe their one might be faster. Maybe. Yeah, because because I imagine the Rust one he padlocks like crazy because it's written in Rust, right? And they're like, but I've got to get my left times right. It's typical Rust way is like yeah, can't say. <laughs> Oh, this lifetime problem is too hard. He power game. Um. Oh yeah, the GNUisms. GNUisms. 
Yeah, they'll be all be yeah, and also it won't be done. Yeah, the herd kernel, amazing. Oh yeah, need Stormman to come back and uh, show me how it's done. Too busy, uh, too busy saying stupid stuff on the internet. Oh my days. <laughs> yeah, Gigi turned. <laughs> oh my days. In theory, it should be possible to optimize Rust builds more than C++ because it's easier to figure out with dependencies, but in practice. Yeah, but, and also, you guys on on no, you know, you, your pointers are restricted by default, right? Then they're, they're no alias. Then they're, they're not aliasing each other. So you can get some really interesting optimizations from that. Uh, and also SIMD, right? Because of that, right? Do, 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 do. Yeah, someone be a, a huge fan of. Uh, also, uh, his, you know, it will be buddies with um, Prince Andrew. You know. Yeah, nowadays oh, these, these people. Yeah, it's really bad. I think one of my favorite videos to watch is the one where Prince Andrew has been interviewed with the uh, BBC, and he just digs himself a right big hole. It's great. Oh, sick people. Program my cat and see. Amazing. Yeah, point at any rule is rules are better than Rust, yeah. Uh, right, so we've got this mouse, so this moose. So if we look at the internals of the operating system abstraction, what we find is there's already a mouse. Ah. Um, so we could expose all of this stuff and then it just becomes like, right? But then if you have functions, you know, having ex like implicitly behavior be index this yourself just seems a bit, um, It seems it doesn't seem easy to understand sometimes like how you use it. Whereas if you have it as a function, like we do already, it just becomes easier to use. Like because it you know input parameters, output parameter, you know, so you can just work it out. Um, so if we were to do this. We're going to have, we're going to define a nice core ID. So a core define ID, this just defines a wrapped 32 bit integer. And it's going to be called an input device. If you unplug it and plug it back in, it's going to maybe be different. I think, yeah, it should be different. And then what we're going to do is this is going to be all internal, right? So hop into the internals. And so we have our input device type. So what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to say, right, OS input device type, pass in your uh, ID. So we'll call it your device ID. And then you can also pass, you can also get the, get it as a mouse. No, you can't get his mouse. Oh, you might have to get his mouse. Wait a minute. No. So maybe all of these guys. So we'll call this like input device mouse, right? And you'll just put a comment here saying this is basically for mouse, keyboard. No, 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 no comments, it's here. Um, so you'll use this, and obviously we'll put assertions in if you try and do it the wrong way. Um, so you can get all your stuff. And you know, it would be better if we just could, could just do a get and avoid uh, getting the pointer every time. And But I think, you know, in release builds, hopefully it all gets inlined and it should be better. But if not, it's not the end of the world because it probably won't happen so rapidly. 
you know, thousands and thousands of times. It would just happen like 50 times at most, right? Very low amount. So I think it should be fine. Um, I don't even think it'll happen 50 times, to be honest. But yeah, we're going to be like plugging those in, get you in device, keyboard device, and you can sort of just like do this, right? So super, super cool, super awesome. So then, now we need like a gamepad API, right? Should we skip the gamepad API for now? Probably not. Because, uh, yeah, just be good to do the gamepad, right? So with a gamepad, you kind of want to have some like keys and stuff. So, you know, I kind of I kind of like the way SDR does it, right? It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of nice, but Hmm, I'll have a think about it. I'll have a think about it. So I think that they have like gamepad buttons and they have axis as well. Now, actually, I don't like, I, I, okay, I, like, I partially like the way they do it. So let's look at the way SDL does it just for a second. Um, user include SDL to um, SDL game controllers. None of that, right? This one. So I think they have like a button oh, and they also do bindings as well, but anyway. Um, oh my days. NDAs, what have they done? No, I'm joking. Um, right. So... Yeah, so they separate the axis and the button into separate enumerations. And I don't think this is a good idea because it's so small. And like when you want to, you know, do a binding, you've now got to be like, oh, if it's an axis, it's the, you know, you have an extra bit of information to say where it's an axis or a button. Just put it all in one. So I think we, w but we want, we want to take inspiration from this though. And the inspiration is going to be basically emulate a Xbox 360 controller. And I need, I need to go and get my 360 controller because I don't have it around here. I've just got the PlayStation once. Um, but yeah, emulate this in a sense that, you know, it's got two analog sticks. It's got some triggers, which are analogs. And then it will have um, some buttons like XY, ABXY. But uh, maybe we'll have a way... Maybe we'll have a way to, um, yeah, I don't know if we want to use the terms A, B, X, Y though, but maybe, maybe we just say it's a 360 controller, but yeah. <laughs> At least it doesn't panic around the house. Oh, uh, that's a good one, Nico. Are you still going to add all these engine videos to YouTube or are you missing some recordings? Hey, Mr. Dick Steel, don't worry, I got you covered, my friend. Um, they're already up there. They're all there. You can check them all out. So I just, you know, Twitch has a nice way where I can just take, to just send it up um, straight after the stream is done. So, uh, we've got a nice VOD channel. Right, here's the buttons. Yeah, so we'll take a look at these. You know, they've also got extra ones. Uh, what's this? For the Elite Controller, they've got paddles. Right, so they've ended up doing more. So it's not just maps to a 360 controller anymore. They've got more things, right? So, okay. Um, anyway, so we're going to basically inspire by this, right? When we, um, so it's not really a button anymore. Instead, I want to call it like an action, right? There's an something that's happened, like a gamepad action, gamepad. Um, 
Yeah, I think action will do. If anyone's got any better names, type them away. We're going with action for now. Always give it a give it a rebrand. So we'll have gamepad action. So you know you've got A B X Y right on the on the uh, on the super lovely PlayStation Five controllers. You got cross, square, circle, and triangle. You know people call this X right, but officially it's cross for some reason. <laughs> X. Uh. Anyway, um, so you know A B X Y is also on the Switch, and it's just generally like you know so i might just use left right up down right but in terms of like in some other way like uh because if you say x a b x y on switch it's not a b x y um and you know xbox is dying anyway gamepad event so i'm not sure if i want to do event yeah, also action is not really too good either because we've got like, uh, you know, I'm swinging the controller around, you know, like the accelerometer. Um, but maybe maybe that could be mapped into here as well. Because do, 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 do they have that motion stuff? Because they've got axis. Uh, do they have like uh, effect, rumble triggers? Don't care about that. Sensor, they've got sensor data, sensor type. Gyro, accelerometer, right, and the number of values you get back. So you get back your, okay. So I guess you're just reading sensor data back and it's more of a high level thing. Okay. Um, we can call them buttons. We can just call them buttons. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, see, I've already got a thing called event, which is a shame. So we already read events back, you see. But yeah, so not event. But yeah, I'm not sure about action, though. So I have D-pad left. D-pad left. Right, also, what way do we do... We do uh... Up, down, left, right. Uh, I think we do left down, right up, right. And the reason why we do that way is because this is x, x, y, x, y, right. Lower left, like, like in terms of the way we think about things in the code basis. Bottom left, top right. You know, lower left origin. I think this is what. Anyway. Um, so we'll do the same thing again. Switch also has named A, B, X, Y. Yeah, but the problem with that is they're different, right? A is, A is not, like, A on the Xbox is there, whereas A on the, on the Switch is there, right? So it's just not sensible. Um, but I don't know what a good name would be. Um, so I could just call it like, yeah, it says, I don't know how decent it is. So I could call it like button left, up, down, right. But then like, so there's D pad, I could call it A pad for like, I don't know. Like I need a good, I need a good, like another good name for it. You know, I think in the, uh, in the event device API, which is obviously EV dev on Linux, um, they use North, East, South, West. Um, yeah, that's just <laughs> still not good. Um, right. Is it getting dark? Yes. Let's switch on the light.
So, hmm. um, you know, I could I could be all PlayStation about it, right? You know, because I don't know. Probably gonna stay the same for a very long time. But I want something more agnostic, you know, more, something more... Um, you know, it is kind of like an action button. Right. So, okay, what's the... Uh, so we have the name, we have like D-pad. What's the sort of like the other D pad or something? Control pad. So I'm trying to see if there's like a way of like. Now, what do people call the stuff on the right hand side? So, name for buttons opposite the D-pad. Dun 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 dun. I don't think anyone's came up with a way, with a, a, a like a. Uh, a name that's very general f for it, you know, a general name for like A, B, X, X, Y, right? A general Yeah, why not A, B, C, D? Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why not one, two, three, four? Um Has anyone got a good name? Yeah, Sega chose XY. Did they? Yeah, XYZ on the Mega Drive, right? AB pad. Action button pad. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I think it's already called action though. Right, action. I still could call it button left, button right, but then it seems like D-pad. So... Oh, my days, the Super Nintendo, of course, is this ABXY as well. Oh, so that's where it came from. <laughs> oh, my days. Of course. Same as the Super Nintendo. Game of Engine, my friend. All from scratch in C. What exactly are the four facing labels? A, B, C, or A, B, X, Y. Yeah, what's the, what's the name for these? We could call them... Referred to as face button controls. Face button. It could be called smash buttons, you know, because you're always smashing the crap out of them. Um, well, in, in old games at least. Yeah, the compass buttons. Do it. Are they called the face buttons? Game face buttons. They're called the face buttons, apparently, according to this one image on the internet and, and a comment on the thing. They're called face buttons. Wait, where is it gone? Right, the proof is gone. I thought they're all face buttons because they're all like on the face of it. Pressure sensitive face buttons. They are called face buttons. Face up, face left. We could maybe roll with this. Right. 
the best face buttons. This seems pretty standard, actually. Yeah, yeah exactly. One is a uh, pressure sensitive face. Not bad. Right. Face left. There we go. We did it. It's four letters as well. Face. Look at that. It just aligns. I wonder if you can call them something descriptive, not directional related, since they're. That could be like it changed. Yeah, secondary. Yeah, you could just call that one, two, three, four, right? But then again, on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, that is true, actually. Because on the Nintendo Switch, as as silly as it is, the circle button, right, position, is A, which means go, and B is back, which is X, and it's the other way around. And I, and who remembers on PlayStation One, right? Who's who's old enough to remember on PlayStation One, circle was the thing to accept menus in some, in most cases, or the start button, which you don't have anymore. So that's interesting, isn't it? So yeah, I think we should say face one, face two, face three, face four. And, you know, I guess people will be like, oh, that's dumb. What does that mean? When do, we won't do A, B, C, D. Because A, B, C, A, B at least makes it seem like it's the A and B button. But then again. So if you're playing on one console and you're playing on another console. And you have your X button to jump on PlayStation. Does that mean you want it to be circle? Right? So maybe like. On, on another console. How do people do? So may, maybe doing up, down, left, right isn't so bad. And then you basically have, uh, what is the menu accept button on this console? Oh, that one is face down, but then on face button down, whereas on switch it's face button right. You know, so it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's yeah landed back on this one. But yeah, it's an interesting thought experiment though, just to sort of see what was right or not. Right, so we obviously need our start and select buttons. They call it back because they're obviously doing the uh, you know. So you have start and you have select. I'm, I'm just gonna do the PlayStation names. But then again, you don't have start and select on the um, which is really. You don't have start, uh, sorry, select on the... Oh, you do, you do, you do. You have option, right? It's options now. And then select is kind of the touchpad push in, right? Isn't it? So, but then again, touchpad, some games do, oh, on the left-hand side do this, but on the right-hand side do this. And that... I don't know if I really like that because it's kind of like different on each game and you don't really know. Why do you ever... Why do you need these ever surface? Couldn't you get just change and refer to based on metadata coming from the controller or driver or something. Can you just change and refer to the ba based on the metadata coming from the controller or driver or something? I'm not sure what the question is. We're trying to figure out, so we're basically writing a generic uh controller abstraction we are yeah a generic um con game controller and if it doesn't you know most game controllers basically are just 
like you know they're kind of like playstation or xbox like um you know they have two analog sticks they have four face buttons they have four d-pad buttons you know and two back you know shoulder buttons and all that stuff right so um yeah that sort of thing um playstation micro microphone button switch capture button do they do that misc one <sighs> microphone button wait a minute you can press the microphone button and they pick that up oh i didn't realize that i thought that was all system that was all system level huh so the microphone button obviously mutes you but they're they're all because I thought they just queried the state elsewhere, but fair play. Um, these are paddles. Right, so you can press the left stick in, right? Let's skip a shout. Left stick, right stick. Stick, left, stick, right. And then you've got a shoulder. Yeah, so shoulder, shoulder a good name. Because, yeah, they call it a bumper, don't they? Pretty weird name on, on, on Xbox. But yeah, I think... No, shoulder bumpers are the other ones. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah, trigger. You could call it like a back button. Right, but no, 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 no. Shoulder, shoulder's good enough. Shoulder's good. I like shoulder. Um, right. So we're going to also have the axes on here, okay? So we're going to have your left stick, your stick, left, X, your stick, left, Y, and your stick, right, X, Y. And then you're also going to have your uh, trigger. Trigger left, trigger right. So I think that's good. So these are gonna, these are analog. But the interesting thing about this API is it's going to give you an analog thing back. It's not just going to give you booleans or analog. It's just so you'll be able to say right. So the API is going to be like. Um, so we might do like this keyboard has been pressed thing. Is pressed, has been pressed sort of deal. But then you can also get back the value. So we'll do gamepad. Gamepad action is pressed. Action has been pressed and it has been released. And then you can also go and get the action value. And the action value is just going to come back as a float 32 from zero to one, right? So we can then pass in this super lovely OS gamepad action. Hey there, Poe, how you doing? How's things been? How you going? Oh, I didn't write the word action. Right, there we go. So that's, and this will be the API for the gamepad when it's connected, right? So yes, things can be analog, right? Okay, it will be normalized. Wait a minute. Wait, you want positive and negative? Yeah, because the reason why we did it this way is so you have the button mappings, because then, then you can map it to positive and map it to, neg you know, you can map like running forward to left x up oh, sorry sorry left x right for instance if it's a 2d game and back left x ne like negative so maybe we have right and left or like i think they do like do they do pause you know let's look at what name do they use see they just say left x and y yeah yeah so again it's not as so they do positive and negative which I think I always want my things to go from zero to one. 
normalize zero to one. Um, and then we want to say, so we'll have left. See, I could use the word right and then a left, but it's just not good. So we'll have positive, negative. So pause is going to the, yeah, but then it goes to the right. Err. So it's up. Left, stick left, X. <laughs> uh, right, uh, so I guess we'll say left and right. Yeah. Ugh. We're doing it, we're doing it. Then we'll say, so left is negative, which means up is negative. Now up is positive, so it's down. And then up. Wait a minute, what have I done? What have I done? I didn't duplicate. Down, dupe, dupe. Left, right, up, down. Oh yeah, cool. So there's all of our action buttons. Wait, is there more? Uh, yeah, I think there could be one or two more that come up, but for now this will do. Uh, we probably want to Yeah, I guess we figure them all out before we ship something. That's the idea. Because then we can serialize these out, you see. Glad to catch the stream again. Awesome. Good to see you. Yeah. This won't be confusing at all. I know. Stick left, X left. X right. Mm, pause ne positive, negative. Mm, yeah, pause or negative. Hmm. Anyway, that'll, go, that'll do. So that's super cool. Uh, we could obviously get some names. Need, need, we need some good names all the time. So, so gamepad, gamepad, action strings. So obviously you have the count worth of those. And voila. Cool. So let's work our way down. So we've done all the low levels. We've figured out everything we need to figure out, hopefully. Um, so now what we want to, so we, there is that motion and stuff like this, right? Should we, should we try and add this in? Cause we, you know, do they, should we look at how SDL sort of layers it and we'll see, get some inspiration here. So they have like a sensor as they call it, right? Um, with their sensors, they have like accelerometer, which returns the current position in SI meters per sec. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe should we do some of this or not? Don't know if it's decent. Uh, gyroscope sensor. So it's. They don't roll pitch your right instead of a quaternion, you know. Um, so accelerometer gyro, accelerometer left for the left joy con and we nunchuck, amazing. Um, yes, yeah, so they've got accelerometer, yeah. So accelerometer is just the movement. like the, the movement, there's the direction, and then gyroscope is the rotation in space. All right. Um, mm. Plug that in. Yeah, the thing is, I'm not sure, like maybe we want to return the you know, this is a, a quaternion, really. And I don't really have quaternions in the code base yet. Mm. North, south, east, west. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. 
Ähm. West, East, North, South. South, North, East, West. Oh yeah, thank you for that, appreciate it. So we could add some sensor stuff in, but then again, it's not too difficult to sort of, well, you know, uh, you know, we could add the API in for it. You know, does my gamepad have sensor support? But then again, you would just check it. Mm. Yeah, it has sensor. You need to have sensor and make it enabled or something like that. Yeah, so that's interesting. So maybe you can say like, you know, has um, accelerometer. Well, <laughs> is it double hour? It's just one hour, isn't it? And you, you probably want to do it has gyro. I would try Ray Lib, not personally, but I've seen it. It's decent for people who are sort of learning. We could shorten this rate. Um, yeah, it's decent for people coming down to see and uh, having to play and getting some stuff up on the screen and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you'll kind of want to like read the value for it, right? So. Then you're able to say accelerometer value. And that gets you a F32 times three, right? A position in space. And then you want a, um, a gyro value. And the gyro value should give you a quaternion, but we don't have a quaternion yet. So the answer is gonna be, um, we don't have a quaternion yet. So we're just gonna do quat, quat, uh, 2D quaternion type. Quaternion. Did you spell it quaternion? All oh, right, that one. Uh, type. So it's just four floats. ZW. Thank you, Pope. You appreciate it. There we go, gyro. Sweet. So, uh, right. So now we've got our API. Uh, we're gonna make. We're gonna go down now from the top down. So we've made adjustments. We've got this input device. When I can get there. So our new input device, which basically wraps your mouse, keyboard, or gamepad, and you can now, you know. We, need, we do need a way to get a list of all those input devices. So a way to sort of like iterate over all of them. Um, is that true? Oh, you might want to get a name as well. Get, get a nice juicy name for that. Concert char star, but maybe not even a concert char star. Maybe one of those lovely core strings. So you at least have a length, you know. Um, you might also want to get like a you know, we are doing like this USB thing. Um, not USB. Um, so maybe you can get like a vendor and a device. Um, like a vendor number 
and uh, maybe you get like a vendor number and a model number where, where it's called. I keep, I keep forgetting these things. And the product number. Now, the reason why you might do that, well, you could just do it with a device name. But yeah, maybe, because uh, it would be interesting, like, um, maybe I want to expose that. So maybe there could be some gameplay element where you sort of plug it in and it maybe takes the hash of it or, you know, something, something unique happens that's kind of very minor. Um, but it's just a nice little thing in the game where it just sort of like has a unique thing for each, uh, when you plug in a different controller or something, right. Or use a different controller or whatever it is, right. Maybe your character has a slight different color or, or whatever it is, right. I just think it seems like an interesting gameplay thing. Maybe that can be true. So if you take a look at it, you've got like, a, you know, it's, it's 16 bits. So 65,000 vendors until we run out. <laughs> uh, it's really bad. I think that's right, isn't it? Uh, vendor. Is it like a USB thing? Are they 16 bits? They, they always look 16 bits. Yeah, so there's, there's only 65,000 companies who can make USB stuff until, like, we're buggered. Good idea. Anyway. <laughs> oh, this is really bad. So, yeah, maybe you can get, like, the device vendor and the, uh, and the product ID. That'd be just a bit of fun, right? Um, and then you probably want a way to actually iterate over all of these. So you can like see, um, or just get a list of all the IDs. Is that a good idea? Wait, so we, we, we can iterate because we can do an object pool. Uh, equally, we could just have an array of them. Um, but yeah, iterate over all the devices and do something maybe. Um, so we can just expose that as a return a boolean iter next and then iterate previous. We'll expose that as well. Sweet. So we're going to go into the back end now. Um, we'll go into the internals actually. Um, and we're going to change these structures. Um, so what I want to do is get this region here. Um, so we'll drop this up here. Let's take mouse. Did the music stop? Nah, it's still going. All right, it's for the OS back end. There you go. Oh, there should be an event section as well. Good point. So this is a nice internal header. So we can forward declare all of the internal functions. So we can have documentation here if we want in the future, or just a way to sort of have it all, you know, you can read the header file and just get a zoomed out view of what's going on. Um, so 
here's the internals, all the internal lovelies. Oh wait, there was a event thing that could go in the event section. All right. So now here's the input device. So what I want to do is chuck in the OS mouse, the moose, and then chuck in the OS keyboard. And then I also want to chuck in the OS gamepad, which you haven't done yet. Now the beauty is, is we get to define the structure now. Dude, I got myself some audio tech headphones. Right, all my days I need to plug in my charger. I don't know why it's run out of battery so quick. Blues, Technic, Technica, right, headphones. The Prime Day, best headphones I've ever owned, sweet. Yeah, these are Skullcandy Hash ones. Um, they're, they're just cheap and, and pretty good. So you got a ATH, Dash M50X. No, so you got these on deal. Oh, so they, what's the quality like? Are they like stunning? Wait. Uh, go on this website. Nice, so can you plug them in to your PC? Or do you, can you plug them into mobile as well? Oh, you take them out on you. Okay, that's good. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, you need a good pair of headphones. And headphones are one of the best ways to listen to music as well. Gamepad, gamepad, gamepad. So now what we're gonna do is do this whole is pressed thing, right? So the, mm, have we got enough buttons to make it a bit set? But if we made it a bit set, it can be a lookup table. But then, oh wait, we can just do it this way. Don't mind me. I was being a silly. Wait, we can just make it one a one U sixty four, isn't it? Because no way is it gonna be more six more than sixty four keys. See, we can make these all. It's better if they're probably linear, to be honest. And it might be better if the mouse ones are linear as well. But then it doesn't matter because there's only so, there's very little of them. So, that's uh, such a waste though. Oh no, because you have multiple of them pressed. Oh no. Um, no, it's useful like that. Maybe, maybe we need two actually, a, a flags version and a non-flags version. But anyway. So we can have a U64 for action. All right, we'll take, take this. Save a bit of the typing. Action is pressed. Just need a U64 because it's all you need. Um, so you also need to have the values, right? So this is just going to be an F, F32 action. Um, action values, and you're just going to have a sort of an OS gamepad action count, right? Now, you know when I was saying, oh, it's decent that if we combine the axis and the uh, the axis and the buttons into the same enumeration, but then like you have like this accelerometer thing and gyro. Like you're never gonna to wanna to say like that is mapped to a button 
or like this is mapped to a button, you probably want to have some more sort of like game game logic specific things to tell it to map. So we need a way to probably transition these actions. Yeah, and these won't be remappable if you had have accelerometer and gyro, they direct probably directly feed into something. Yeah, so those don't need to be part of this. Yeah, I'm using Neo Vim for the real time errors. We're using uh what are we what are, what are we doing? Uh Neo Vim LSP. So I used the TJ's setup script to get it all set up. But it, well, I took the bits from it and stuck it in my own one. Well, I convert my own one over to Lua, because you have to convert it to Lua. Well, maybe you don't. And I used uh, TJ's, um, what's it called? It's not called Bootstrap, Kickstart, that's it. So, yeah, I used this thing. Yeah, so I use this one. Uh, it's got a great c config to sort of just get all the stuff that you want from it, like language server protocol. So that's what I'm using basically, and I'm sort of like just adjusted it for my thing. Because in all honesty, it's a load of crap, like all this config stuff. There's just so much, like no one can guess all of this or read the documentation correctly to find all this. It's so... It's a lot of work, but it's great that this thing is this to make it easy to just copy paste and then tweak some values. Um, but yeah, um, I wish I wish configuring near him would have been better, or it is better somehow. I know it's probably a hard problem. Oh yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool near him. I do, I do, I do like it. It's a good editor, but. Yeah. Oh, you plug into your guitar amp. Sweet. Nice. Right. So. So you get your values, and then you also want to have the. Uh, um, three floats. Right, for an accelerometer value. Do we call it Excel or accelerometer? I think we did the full, we did the full word, didn't we? Because I like it, wide, wide text, you know. The accelerometer value and also the quaternion for the gyro. And I don't call it a gyroscope, right? Let's call it a gyro. It's a gyroscope, isn't it? Yeah, it's gyroscope, that's it. Um, I know it sounds cool saying gyro. But yeah, I'm just keeping consistency here. Long name. I saw the gyroscope angle in there as well. Maybe it's in a... Anyway, we'll figure that one out. But All right, anything else? We obviously need a way to sort of say, hey, is this thing supported um, on this gamepad? Right, so I think we need some form of flags. Type def structure um, OS gamepad flags. Those can kind of, these can be internal. We don't care about this public. Flags. So it's kind of like the information, the anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, what are we saying? Flags for has accelerometer. And the other one is has gyroscope. 
So it's just going to capitalize all of that. And voila. Uh, Greek food. Hey there, Kappa. Welcome. Yeah, I love Greek, Greek food, man. We went, uh... Yeah, there's a place we go into in, in, in the town where I live. And, uh, it's gorgeous. Well, deleted it all. Wait a minute, is it Greek food what I'm talking about? Like the Mediterranean stuff. Like, like, let's have a look. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking right. Or maybe it's not. I did Greek. But maybe it's not. Hmm. Like, no, it's more, it's more Turkish, isn't it? Actually, like kebabs and stuff. Maybe. Like, you know, like lots of yogurt and olive oil. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe 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 I've not had Greek food before, or at least I don't know what, exactly what it is. All you need is shor shorama, shorama. Ooh, oh my days! It's like half. It's like twenty to ten in the evening, and it's just looking at food. Makes me hungry. Let's do it. Nice. These things look thick. Oh. Oh. Love me some good food. Oh my days, why, why did I just look at that? I'm so hungry now. Uh, what have I done? Uh, I, I like a good beef. Yeah, I think I like beef more. But yeah, they're both, they're both good. You've got to season it. Season the chicken though. Well, beef, you can kind of get away with, uh, you know, you obviously got to pepper it. But yeah. Yeah, beef beef's good though, but it's more more expensive, right? I think I think my wallet likes chicken more, but but personally, yeah, beef is good. Um, right. So the, the beauty is right. Well, it's not the beauty. We just made it more complicated now. Ready? They're no longer globals. Bam. Now the idea is we need to make a new core define object pool. Oh yeah, my favorite data structure. So we have to define a new custom object pool. And uh, where we go. So we're gonna be do we're gonna be saying right OS no no sorry core object pool. And this is our input devices pool. So every time we connect a device, the low level ab abstraction goes and adds a new device into here. Um, basically, allocates a new device, uh, that sort of thing. So we need to figure out how we're gonna do all of that. But we need to also just get this current one compiling still. So we want to have like a, a capacity of uh, OS input device capacity.
device pool capacity. So let's just say 1024 devices, right? If someone inserts more than this, we're just going to ignore them. We could do 256 to be honest. That's probably good, 256 is probably good enough. After that, we just ignore it and we don't accept any more devices. Um, you know, we don't crash, we just ignore it. So now let's hop into the actual implementation of the of this. Uh, so this is all changed. Let's just make a little bit of the adjustment. No longer avoid parameters, they take a thing. No worries, no worries. Who's Josh West Westman? Who's that guy? What does he do? All right, so the beauty about all of this is we just need to do a get and then an assert. So when we get the input device, we can do the assertion in there, right? So we're gonna have a new internal API and we're going to basically say right um we're going to get it to the assertion for us because it's just way easier and also maybe we don't care sometimes do we care all the time we'll have two versions os input device get so the first version just takes in the id The second one is like get checked uh, OS input device type. So we'll be doing a few of these guys. So the general input device section. So the first one is literally just going to return. Uh, so this is why I, I make this function because I always always forget. But it's like core object pool get, and you've got to pass in your object pool. So it'd be like gos dot um, this one, and then device ID. And you need, you need, the, you need the address, right? So it's so error prone to type. So I like having these shorthand functions. So just makes that easier. And also we're gonna make this guy and it's just gonna assert right. So you get this thing. Device. And we just say right. Uh core assert so debug assert. And we're gonna assert that uh, device type is equal to device type. Um, and then we do a nice little string match which again we actually have this uh, we're missing uh Someone else here. Extern const char star. It's a food channel. Mm -hmm. Oh no. It looks so good. Yeah, I'm avoiding that. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, not 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 now. Maybe some other time when I'm when I'm less hungry. Uh, device type strings. So we need a count here as well. I'm going to be pretty happy with this abstraction. This is going to be good. Uh, so these are all kind of public thingies, right? So we kind of need these to be implemented. So I think I want to put the internal ones below. Let's make our nice lookup table, get a nice string. Three at T's, I'll do it.
Noise. So there's a name. We've kind of forgot about the name in there as well. All right, some other bells and whistles we wanted. We wanted a name. So we'll, we'll store a core string in there. Uh, so it's just a, a, a char pointer with a, a size. So get a name in there. We also want like a vendor ID. <laughs> vendor ID and a product ID. And I think that was, uh, was that it? Yes. Oh, that's gonna be so good. So good. Um, so for this, it's just gonna return basically a get device ID name. Type vendor and device. Uh, sorry, uh, product. Did I did I write ID on it? I did. Good. Oh yeah. So iterate previous and next. We have functions for these in the object pool, which is super good. Uh, but again, this is more of just convenience of me remembering how to use the API. Um. Just when you have to type it out in a more simple manner. So there's an it's a previous. So we just discard the I don't know if we can pass in a null I don't know if we're passing an off for that. Should we check the core out? Source core core C. It's a previous. Right, it always gets set, but it just gets ignored, right? Yeah, so you just need a pointer there, like just hang, hanging around. So PTR, address of PTR, and we just ignore it. There you go. So we'll iterate over the devices, get different. Now, obviously, oh yeah, it should be fine. We could have just kept an array of these and just given you back an array to look over over yourself, but um, this is fine as well. Thank you, thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. So, you know, one thing I just want to mention quickly is like, you know, people when they write C++ and everything, they have like, and, and like Rust and all, all that, they have like these iterators. And I know the Rust iterators are very powerful. They can like chain them all together and make, do really, you know, filter things out and stuff like this. But um, one, one thing I like about the way this one is done is that we, to use it, you literally just declare a few, few locals, uh, set them to zero, and then you can just like basically do a while loop and iterate this way. Um, and it's quite quite simple and elegant. You don't have to write, uh, like all you have to do is write a function basically, and, and you can just use it as a function. You don't have to have special language features and all of this. So it's quite, it's quite nice, um, but yeah. It does require having to do that though, but you know, they're, they're, they're parameters to, to a function, so you can always work out when you try and use it. Um, but yeah, something I like. So basically, like, uh, attempted to get a so expected to get a this device, but got. Device. Cool. So we'll just do that super lovely lookup table. So it's like a OS input device type strings. So you just do device. Uh, so we expected device type, but we got 
uh, device type. Cool. Wait, why didn't that work? Non void? Okay, that's fine. Don't mind me. There we go. So that's just a nice. Pretty good. Cool. So we just got to go through. So now what we can do is we can use this checked one. So it's all checked. If you use the wrong one, and we can simply just return checked device ID. Mouse. Oh wait a minute. So we need to say OS device. Else. Position, just like that. So we take that around, just uh, do your relative positions, do your uh, will, relative will, get your bit sets. Has been pressed, has been released and voila so the same for the keyboard this time use the keyboard one oh looking good look all that error so we need to look for keyboard and we need to use so a lot of this is bit set thingy right so that gets taken in here. You say keyboard. Conflicting types, say. Eh? Hmm. Need this device ID, you see. Cool, so let's just whack all these in. Uh, so we want to get basically some bit sets and things like this. So we'll drop them in side by side and then we'll do a bit of a fix up. So uh, is pressed, wants to be, has been pressed, has been released. The next key code is pressed. which would then be um, vert key code is press bit set, virtual key code, virtual key code, like that, right? Then we delete the rest of them, just so we got them exactly right. Cool, and then the other ones basically want a, oh no, it's a vert key code now. Now the other ones want to have this still, but they need to, do like a key code, to vert key code, look up with key code. Then the other one is a copy of that, but the other way around. Vert key code, to key code. Then this one is all about the key modifiers. Uh, has been pressed, has been released. Boom. Cool, so that's the adjustment now to the sort of the, this is the 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 general, why is the device ID on there? Get out of there. Um, this is more of the, so we've got the OS.C is more of like the shared stuff between all the operating systems, but it's still OS related, right? It's, it's very thin, basically. It's to do with like all the, um, but yeah, maybe, Actually, yeah, we still need to like, we might need to go over all of the 
stuff and resets it all actually thinking about it but we'll leave this in here so we're we're we're, we're reminded i guess because we still need to add gamepad yeah there's ways to queue events as well wait is there an initialize yeah so we need to initialize the okay we're not quite finished yet object pool initialize and the object pool we're initializing is the input devices and we use the static allocator and we initialize it with os input capacity like that okay now here we want to use our lovely iterator uh, but we're not going to be using the one that's exposed publicly instead we're going to be using this one here so we're getting input device oh bear in mind did i get that wrong no, I didn't. That's fine. That's fine. So they initialize that to null. Then we get the uh, device ID. So device ID. And what we want to do is say while iterate next. So it's address of input device ID, address of input device. We then want to switch on the inf input device type. So you get your three different uh, mouse, keyboard, and the uh, gamepad. And we should just like, Set everything back to I'm gonna do that right. There we go. We set something back to some sensible state um, at the beginning of a frame. So this would be input device dereference that. And we can we can already do the ones for the uh, gamepad as well. We just gotta go and have, have a bit of a look. Oh, like that. Now the other ones, so for the gamepad, you need to clear out the has been pressed and has been released, right? Because is pressed is a persistent state. These are, has it been pressed this frame? So when you initialize a new frame, obviously you need to re reset those. And maybe the same with the accelerometer as well. Um, probably, yes. Think about that. So basically these two things need to be zeroed. So that's just a simple job of gamepad input. Oh, da, 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 da. Action has been pressed, zero, right to zero the bit set, and then it has been released. Now you probably want to reset the gyro and the accelerometer. Um, then you probably also want to reset the quaternion uh, for the uh, gyro, right? So that'll just be like four and that'll be a you know identity well some of that i think anyway um cotonian some of that oh wait you got to do these break uh See initializes, there we go. Cool. So, is that an, oh, wait. OS, wait, core, ID, ID null. Is that a thing, core ID? Exactly. So I need an, a zeroed ID, basically. So we just need to do that. And then when the mouse has been moved, 
now we need the now this is this where interesting thing right from the operating system we actually need a device id so we need a way in like when a when a mouse is clicked we need to remember what we did right we've we've got a we've still got to obviously do, do the wiring for it but we found out there's a way to use x you've got to use x input and get the your it's called like the forgot what exactly what it's called but you get this id right for the optical mouse 10 then you can use that to say x input And you'll be able to get your device node for it. And then we use UDEV. UDEV knows about all of our devices. So we can do, we could do a hash table lookup, but I think we can just take the final 17 here and just do a, do an index lookup, right? And I think that should be fine. Because if I LS for my dev inputs, I don't think it's ever gonna go more than 256. So I think we have a 256 lookup table and just, indirect sorry just do a indirect look up into that and get back our device id and then we can use that device id in here so i think it should be pretty straightforward now that we know but it was a lot of lot of research uh, which is a bit of a pain but yeah so we wanted to use a device id that comes in here i want to do that for all of these bells and whistles and also why is this not in the um event section, right? Why, why, why is, why is that not event, event section? So, uh, these should actually move. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna take all this device ID stuff. So for the mouse, takes the device in takes a device in, takes a device. For the keyboard key press, takes a device. And there you go. So all those need a device, go in there and do that. So in they go. And then we can use that new, super lovely assert function or whatever it is to uh, assert that it's a keyboard when you get it. That way we know everything is going smoothly. So now we can get our input device. Uh, OS input device, device equal OS input device get checked device. And we're gonna be doing a OS device type mouse. And we can use that in all the other places. So I just wanted to quickly drop it everywhere that we need it. Is there any keyboard bits and bobs here? There isn't, is there? All right, those could get thrown in there. Uh, this one needs we need a keyboard in here that one needs a keyboard cool so let's go up and work our way down so these are simply just going to be a bit of a, a redo like this device bam I could call it an input device ready but I've got a device now Oh, I've got to do reference there. Uh, so this one's interesting because actually it's led me to think that uh, we didn't go the full way, right? If it's the key press, guess what? It can also have an input device. How amazing is that? Key device ID. Whoa, mind blown. I have it on all of them. Mouse button. And the mouse wheel and the mouse move.
Hey, but I'm a turn. I got it working. Not quite yet. So we basically went, yeah. So we've done all the low level research. We figured it all out now. It was a real pain, but we've got it all. It's all, it's all in my head. Um, we figured out like basically everything to do the wiring. Uh, so we went, we, we went, so we figured out it was all possible. We went up to the highest level now. We've designed our high level interface. Uh, we've obviously just made a little adjustment here is all. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so we've got a gamepad, action enumeration with all the buttons and analog sticks designed us sort of like API here to get access to the information. Um, we're just, we're going through the operating system C file right now, uh, which is sort of shared across all the operating systems um, to uh, basically, yeah, it's just, just whether so we can share code where it's not needed to repeat it. Um, and just making the adjustments here and then it's going into the low levels of, of the of the back ends and actually doing the proper wiring in for it all. Um yeah, for all this multi keyboard and gamepad stuff. So yeah, it's going it's going good. Um yeah, I was hoping hoping this would be done a lot sooner to be honest, but uh I didn't realise it'd been I didn't realise it'd have been this complicated, but you know when we have when we have it all working it's gonna be amazing. And it's it's we're we're, we're we're uh, making our way through it. I'm looking forward to being at least half as fast in the event. Don't worry, you'll get there. You'll get there. It's just muscle memory. Uh, the, the biggest thing to do, though, is to make sure when you actually, like, have a problem and, you know, you feel like you're not doing something as good, stop and search the best way to do it and then you got to like, yeah, because it's very easy. Like I do it so many times now and I could advance, I still could advance myself and get faster, but I, I'm just get, I just get lazy, you know, I'm just like, it's already fine. But, and I just do something the long way in Vim sometimes. Right. So I think we did, now we just got to plug into the events because we kind of missed it. Um. Uh, it's gonna be so good, so good, so good. So in the event, e device ID, you can get device ID in an event. It's amazing, amazing. On all of the events, let's do it. We also need to do a gamepad event, right? Um, kind of forgot that. So obviously these functions are a way of creating an event uh, for all operating systems just use the same function to create an event. There's no point repeating all this code in the back ends of, you know, it's, it all logically works the same. I could, could should I call it action press on the gamepad? Action. I should have called that keyboard key. I really should, but I don't know. Action pressed. It's not a good name. I don't like the name action, but it's, it's the only name I got. Uh, then you obviously got like gyro. Like accelerometer. Accelerometer and gyro. So we still need some of these guys. Uh, I'm not. Ooh. Is there a string table? 
Oh. Surely we have a string table for this. An int? What foreign place was I in when I wrote that? <laughs> Did I have my int types in at that point? Okay, anyway, I thought we had strings, don't have any strings. Uh, so we'll just quickly jot these in. So you get a nice input device on the button action. So you'd be like, oh, game pad action. Good to see it's mapped in your head. Just wanted the update. Tired and going to bed. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, have a good sleep, by the way. I'll uh, see you in a future stream. Maybe see you uh, next week sometime. Have a good uh, start to the work week. Uh, gamepad action. So gamepad action, you also want a value for it. Right, a nice normalized value. So I could just say, you know, it's from... Uh, Zero to one. Um, love a good normalized value. I could call it value u norm. That would be nice. That would kind of be descriptive, wouldn't it? Rather than just value. Um, oh, look at that name. Value u norm. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so you on action, you also have... What else do you have? The gyro, the accelerometer. So that's just a valley. And the gyroscope. So we'll, we'll obviously need like three functions for that, right? And if an action happens, you want to know if it has been, pre has been pressed or not. Gamepad action, action, accelerometer. You just really want the value. And for the gyroscope, you kind of want the value as well. Just get that super lovely quaternion in there. Get these three guys, shoot over to the, uh, the internals. Drop it in. Just place value with unorm maybe. Yeah, could be. The aim is to be not is to not have to look up when you need to use it. Exactly. Yeah. See value just is a really bad name. Super bad name. Mm. Yeah, it's too late for me to think about it. I might just do it next stream, I think. I'll think about it. I'll have a think. It will haunt me in my nightmares. What's the name of this variable? Uh, um, so I think we want to add it to the event queue.
So, has been pressed. Gamepad pressed. Gamepad released. Gamepad button. Button. Action. Action. Oh, come on. There we go. So you have the action and its value. Why isn't it there? Is pressed is then implicit? Oh yeah. So we're done. Yeah, so value value greater than zero. Press if not been released. Action, action, value, value. See, because it's kind of smooth. Something can smoothly be pressed, and that means it changes all the time. I guess access values constantly can be pressed and changed. Yeah, we'll think about it. We'll, we'll think about that when we play it, play with it from high level. No, no. Yeah, it will. There's all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It will. Not good. Right, that's hopefully fine. So this would just be like gamepad OS event type gamepad accelerator. I did gyro. Scope. Uh, so what we're looking for really is a uh, gamepad accelerometer uh, value. Damn straight. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Uh, bam. Right, we're in. So, complete it. Complete it. So, that is the OS.c file. So, right. Oh, no, no, we didn't complete it. We didn't complete it. We didn't complete it. One more thing. We need something like this. We need to say, hey, it's been pressed. What we need to do is say, right, the gamepad uh, action has been pressed bit set. We need to aura a super lovely bit on there. Did we fill in the has been pressed stuff? The gamepad. Oh, we're not filled in the gamepad section yet. All oh, my days. All right, we'll sort that out. Cast that to U64. Yeah. All right, we got this. And then you need to say, has been pressed, is pressed. Those need to be awed. Delete all that. Then you need to make sure you and not that one. So and not the is pressed to remove it. And then you need to um, or it on the has been released bit set. This frame. Excellent. So that's what was missing there. But now I just remembered we kind of missed all of the other lovely 
bells and whistles for the public API. It's just these guys, really. No biggie. We'll jam these in. So I'm gonna go to the implementation of that. Oh, it's kind of the wrong way around. Oh. All right, Ch I changed it in the header file, it was the wrong, wrong way around. So I kind of want to take this and just like turn it into some strings. Uh, let's just delete those. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. So I want to do a ooh, 25 at S's. Oh no, the wrong ones. 25 at T's, these guys. These are good. So equal blah. No, I mean just a string. Sweet. Let's go for all these. Ah, uh, too many. Whoa, thank you for the rate, man. Appreciate it. How's it going? How's it going, Octa Bins? Welcome, readers. How are we, how are we, how are we doing? How did, how did stream go? Um, so we're currently working on a game from scratch uh, in C, basically just writing it without game engine. Uh, we do have a, a is, there, is there much to show? Probably not at the moment. Um, we did have a, because we're currently in the middle of something. So we do, maybe it might just work. Actually, you know, I hardly doubt it. So effectively, I could probably show a, one of the devlogs is me in the past. So we've got like some basic compute shaders running. Um, we've made our own GPU API on top of Vulkan to just basically run compute shaders. Uh, we've done some low level bits as well um, to do with like custom memory allocation and global rays and stuff like this. Um, we're currently working on the input system, as you can tell with this gamepad thing everywhere. Um, so we've just been getting multiple keyboard and multi mouse support uh, and also multi gamepad support as well. So we've, we've tried to work it all out of X11 and all of this and it's complete rocket science, but we've finally figured out everything low level. So we've just designed the high level thing and we're going down, get it all in. Anytime, just finished. We're working on a, a one bit per pixel 3D renderer for play day. Excellent. One bit per pixel. That's all you need. Is it on or off? Fantastic. Cool, sounds like a cool project. Um, yeah, I've not played with the play date, but I know you can do some like low level stuff with it, which is cool. But yeah, it's quite it's relatively simple to make games on apparently, which is great. We need more simple hardware like that. Um, yeah, so we need to use our new super lovely get input device, which is like a tagged union, but we just want to in ensure that it's a gamepad, right? And then we can say like, okay, we can now use the gamepad and this one, there's a flat, ooh, there's a flags field. And we just need to check if the bit is set, right? So for the OS gamepad, Flags has accelerometer. Does the thing have a gyro? And then this one is like, oh, is this action button pressed? Right, so we just need to say U64 casted one, shift left, action. Nice. 
This one has been pressed. So this is just a 64-bit integer, right? So we're just into the bit set and there is all. Has been uh, pressed, has been uh, released. Uh, get the value. Action values, index for the action, bam. Get the accelerometer, accelerometer value. And there we go, get the gyro value. Good piece out. Nice hanging out. Yeah, it's good to see you. Have a have a good rest of your uh, your Sunday, and I'll uh, end any good such week. Catch you catch you in in a future one. Right, this is pretty cool. So now everything is done in terms of the OS, the high level OS thing. So we've got to work our way down to like the like the proper operating system stuff. So specifically for the you know, Windows and, and the Linux as well. So we've done the research for the Linux side, uh, mostly this stream and the stream before. It was, um, so we've just got to implement that now. Um, so that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's getting, getting pretty late here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, um, yeah, if any of you guys wanna get access to this code to see, you know, have a bit of a play with it for yourself, there is a, you know, if you support, if you subscribe by Twitch, or if you support me via, via Ko-Fi, which ends up sending a little bit more of the, it's the same price, but it just sends me more, more of the monies, which is good. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a way to get access to the code if you join the Discord, basically, as a thank you. Um, and yeah, there's Discord, if you want to come hang out, you can join that link and have a look. Um, and also, I do, I do have a VOD channel, if you're interested in seeing this from the beginning, it's all there. Um, so you don't have to get the code, you can see how I've done it the whole way. If you fancy taking a look that way too. Um, but yeah, I need to find someone to raid now. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming. The hunt is on. So I stream on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. and Thursdays as well at the same time. I also stream on Sundays at 4 p.m. GMT as well. Right, let's give a TK Nap a, a read. Oh, my days have dragged it. Ooh. So next stream, we're going to be actually getting it all hooked up and uh, multi-keyboard, multi-gamepad, which would be pretty legendary. Hopefully we get it all done next stream. That would be... That'd be amazing. Right. Oh yeah. All right, have a good start to week everyone. Enjoy the first day of work this week and uh, I'll see you all on Tuesday. So yeah, bye-bye.